All right, hello everybody. Welcome to VR Master League here on Channel One. Thursday uh, night or Friday, if you're Pam Wow, who's joining me here on the cast, and it's uh, week eight of season three. I'm Palador, and again, being joined by Pam here. What's up? Uh, not much, mate. Yep, Friday for me, and uh, great to see everybody in the chat stopping by. We have Illumidotti heading up against Ethereal, and great timing on that. Uh, quick reconnect there for Illumidotti there, and uh, yeah, also. Um, as well as my welcomes to the chat, um, my welcomes to Pelador. Uh, great yeah. to be here. How you been? Good, 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 good. It's, uh, yeah, got Pally Wow, see Crazy Kid in there with uh, with that. I'm glad to see you guys. Beat Dash. Uh, we're gonna see some some uh, beaten and some onions later on. But yeah, uh, you guys might notice got the got the old Eclipse jersey, but the alternate one. That is to say, the one with all the signatures on it. You know why? Because. I could, and also because tonight uh, we'll have my 1,000th weekly cast. Now, technically, I'm over a thousand if you count like finals and challengers cups, stuff like that. But weekly cast, my one, my one K mark tonight after about a year, a little over a year. So hey, uh, woo, it's a milestone of sorts, I guess. Either or, I'm ready to get started. Yep. So am I, and also just taking a look at the history between these two teams. I'm in mid January this season. Ethereal did take a game against the limited duty now so uh let's see if limited duty can change anything with this game all right well looking uh let's for a really hot start nice joust and wasted no time four seconds i believe that's identical to what we just saw what i just saw last night if i recall from this team that was uh there they've got that locked down and loaded Wow, brilliant head butter followed up with the uh, brilliant shot there on target mozzie taking away those first two points starting out strong here for ethereal now, Limit Duty with the Joust advantage, we're going to be heading over to QL, crossing it over to Speedy. Speedy in the left tunnel went for the clear. That's going to be JL with the take on it. Now, crossing it over to Single Shot, who might just go for that indeed right here. Lining up the pass, getting interrupted by Speedy. All right, so on the clear there, it's uh, going to be picking up here at the trap by QL. Young has a lane going to be covered, though, at the goal. So we'll wait to, for the teammates to arrive, get a pass out there, but just missing that catch as it goes over to the trap. Yep, and Mozzie just barely finding that clear in time, allowing the regrabs to make their way to take advantage. And the slam dunk followed up from C. Jason. And now a four-point lead here for Team Ethereal. Yeah, Ethereal, uh, the first couple points and off to that turnover. And to chat, why why do I look so awkward? I don't know. What do you mean by awkward? That's kind of a life a lifelong thing. I can't help with how I'm built. I'm beautiful in every single way. I mean, in any case, uh, QL you, Young with a mean, launch. If it means anything to you, Pal, I don't think you look awkward. I think you look fine. Maybe maybe try maybe some more Doctor Pepsi. Maybe it's oh Doctor Pepsi. <laughs> maybe it's the shifting eyes because I know I'm my eyes are all over the place. But that's because you know Kevin casting have like a bunch of monitors. I'm always having to pay attention to that. Said monitor this shot up by the cloud. Gonna be snagged here by Mozzie, backing it out and go, uh, getting it to the midfield. See Jason with a disc. Yep. Great reset there to Jason. Jason crossing it over to JL. JL, great passing here coming from Ethereal. And the cross in the midside. That was a slap there from Mozzie to finish it inside the goals. Brilliant setup there from Team Ethereal. Yeah. And to the chat, no, I'm, I'm not worried about it. Don't worry. Now, see, if I'm, uh, if I'm called, uh, what is it, old and, and boomerish, that may be, that might get me a little bit down. I was, uh, but, but the awkward thing, you just got to embrace it. That's... That's me, baby! <laughs> uh, right now, <laughs> that's a six-point lead for Ethereal as Speedy V and Co. roll out. Yep, that's going to be uh, QL in the midsection, getting stunned out, getting stolen from Speedy, recovering that disc and looking to send it out right past that trench Ooh. section. The regrabs are there from Ethereal in time. And single shot now we're getting that clear off before a nice tap boost. There go all the players for Ethereal and three Ethereal. That is to say, they're up nine. Yeah, Ethereal doing very well. In t you can definitely see how they're utilizing the regrabs, just following up on all those clears that they've been making. I mean, we even saw it earlier. Mozzie with that clutch clear, just making its way um, making his way onto that disc in the right tunnel, and they just followed it up on that clear instantly, and they just found that that goal all to their lonesome, and they found those points. All right, went over to Burbs and trying to find some points of their own, uh, getting off here too. Not the not the fastest start that they want on their end of things, but it's very very tough when you have to maneuver through so much stackage uh, over from the side of Ethereal. But that's a good pass to Wit as Wit cuts, but saved by C Jason. 
Wow, a brilliant play there from Wit, but see Jason just denying it. I, 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 I just want to respect that play there from Wit for a second. Just took that moment to take that step back. Oh. The crossover. See <laughs> Jason said no again. I don't even... How did it not go in? That was right in the goal. The fact that that was not a goal is just credit to the team here and see Jason end to end. Man, talk about deja vu. That exact sequence also happened uh, yesterday when I streamed Ethereal. <laughs> I'm, uh, what is the day today? Because I'm, I'm lost, Pam. Yeah, I mean, 5th of March for me, I believe 4th for you, but who's keeping track now? <laughs> I mean, that, we talked about that as well earlier, the re-grab follow-up on that clear, and we've, we've saw it before, we're, we're gonna keep seeing it, I believe, throughout this entire match. Ethereal doing very well here, especially to see Jason with that follow-up save. Uh, finding those points there. So now 11 to 0, Ethereal taking a strong lead within the first half of the first round. Definitely uh, firing off here with some ether, trying to get that one, but it's another stun here goes. Maybe the first points, an opportunity, and uh, now gonna be closed off. However, that's a tough part as well when the last couple of plays, honestly, Illumidudi had some pretty great looking shot attempts. I mean, they were close up on the goalie, not a whole lot of contest outside of the goalie. But then have it saved back to back like that. That just uh, stifles any any kind of good uh, good rhythm that you can try and build up here. So they're really trying to get it going, and they might now as the shot goes out, and finally the three. <laughs> yeah, brilliant placement there from Speedy. The re grabs were there from Ethereal, and unable to grab that disc just in the nick of time there. So three points heading over to Illumid Dotty now. Uh, I couldn't agree more with you, Palado. I mean, I've seen so many plays coming from so many teams, and it's just that final moments of execution required to find those points inside the bubble, and it just doesn't happen sometimes, and it definitely does uh, separate a lot of teams in terms of plays that we're seeing here. Yeah, but that says some separation on the gels that does bounce uh, the way they did not intend. However, they'll still get it back. So fortunately for them, they're going to have, what, four and a half minutes left here. Have a pretty sturdy lead, so don't need to be rushing all too much. But, you know, this team is still going to be looking to score uh, as another slightly straight pass will manage uh, to get to see Jason. Yep, see Jason crossing it over there to JLJ over under the shield. A single, single, wasn't able to find the shot there. And a clear there from Wit doing very well to get that disc right out from the bubble. And right on the shot as well, back-to-back -back threes for the duty. Uh, QL Young working like it is his duty. And they're uh, 11 to 6. They still got some time, and it's uh, all of a sudden kind of a, a much closer game than it could have otherwise been. It looked like maybe some snowballs, but hey, they're, uh, they're within, what, five points. Mm. And uh, looking at the chat here, Grumpy's Brim saying, let's go, Ethereal. Mozzie is my lover. Mozzie oh. gives me flashbacks <laughs> to my region. Well, Grumpy, I, 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 I love I love me some Grumpy most of the time, <laughs> except when he calls me old. Oh, I I I think um, I make you Grumpy sometimes when, I, especially when mentioning Dr. Pepsi, <laughs> as well as that. Oh my God, Wit! What? That's not the time to talk about Dr. Pepsi. That's time to talk about Wit with that brilliant shot there, three points. Yeah, no, it's. Right now, it's time to talk about Dr. Pepper ringing all these shots from three. That's three threes straight. All of a sudden, when they were down, uh, just no points whatsoever. Complete shutout. Look at this. It's a two-point game with three minutes. What a nice return for Illumidudi. Uh, not, not content to wait until round two to make their move. Yeah, I mean, we talked about Ooh. Ethereal taking a strong lead here. Mozzie responding immediately to which shot there. And Ethereal just trying to maintain that lead they've created here. Okay, well that one they needed a lot uh, after those barrage of threes, three, 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 coming in from duty. Uh, yeah, that big, big one here, and what, 246 left, uh, that will at least put them up again, and finally uh, just close that wound that was starting to uh, develop against Ethereal. And another turnover here is also going to be in their favor, although the clear, not as much. Yeah, I mean, if you can pressure those passes, you can definitely throw it into your favor. QL crossing it over to the left. That's going to be Wit. Wit now on the floor. His member off the left side of the pole. That's going to be Speedy. Speedy now. They're trying to take it slow here. They know they need these three points. It's going to be Speedy with the disc. To find, trying to find the stun. Trying to find the pass to QL. QL crossing it over the backboard. Barely Ooh. missing that. I think he went for the pass for a second. Yeah, so had a chance. Chance is lost. Immediately on the turn. But there's these stacks getting into the defensive zone. So backing it out to Mozzie, now the full spread of the floor here will be had, but another rough bounce, so this is going to give maybe a chance for one of these Illuminati players to get it, and they will uh, need to stack, and there's actually the secondary stack all the way making their way down the field as the defense does retreat. Less than two minutes left, still five points of difference, and a passing play to the corner will be saved by single shot. 
Wow, okay, what a play, what a save there from Single and uh, attempting to clear it here. One minute 38 on the clock, still enough time here. Went for the cross, but the intercept from Single. Single's been putting in a lot of work in the defensive region. Don't tell me. Ooh. Off the backboard, that was extremely close. Yeah, that was really, really almost uh, another huge highlight play for Ethereal, of which they've had a few uh, between these last couple days of streams. That said, only a minute and 17 remaining. So with a score here, there it is. That is, I dare say, going to be uh, enough to at least will them to the first round win, perhaps. But what a return from Illumidudi still. So uh, round two could still uh, be a very, very different one all around. Yeah, definitely got to respect the return here coming from Illumin Duty. I mean, that those first five minutes just it was all over. It was all over for Eth it was all over Ethereal's side. I mean, like they had that 11 point lead at one time, I believe, something along the lines of that. With that said, Whip now with the disc looking to find a few points before the end of the round. Here has a member of Ethereal on, and that pressure will make its way onto him but mozzie uh getting stunned out there for a second speedy trading crossing it over to wit wit now going for possibly a reset there um and now off pac-man that's going to be a slap there making his way to ql ql off the backboard Ooh. brilliant shot there you know i i had rock tour in the chat yesterday asking about uh name a more iconic duo than than mozzie and pocket shots uh how about how about ql young and that backboard consistency just does yeah. it so well yeah Illumin Duty as a whole, they've all been, they've just been doing very well in terms of just maintaining uh, that point uh, difference there. And they're just claw clawing, the, clawing their way back up uh, throughout the round. And uh, they're not letting that lead get to them, which you can definitely respect. And oh, and if, a few more seconds there, and that would have been another three points heading over to them. But with that said, Ethereal uh, taking this first round. Yeah, and, and doing very, very well in that regard. They got in that little bit of a slump. I'm not even sure I'd call it a slump, really, but just uh, suddenly got kind of blitzed by the unexpected uh, barrage of threes. Three of them in a row, in fact, coming in from uh, Luma Duty. And, you know, despite that, it went from an 11 to 0 lead, I believe it was, to just an 11 to 9 off of that. And then after that, they're finally able to stabilize, get some more points in there, and. Uh, look good the rest of of the way, but yeah, a credit to Illumin Duty. They played very, very well. Yeah, very well indeed. And um, yeah, also just uh taking uh just seeing everybody in the chat stopping by. Really, again, appreciate everybody uh with your little messages there in the chat. Um, hey, sorry, there's been a lot. I haven't been able to. What, what's uh, what's read this? It what's this, Pam? Wait, wait, one second. Have I think to, let's stream oh, catch up. Oh, but... Doctor Pepsi, let's go, guys. Doctor Pepsi. Uh, I, I, it, it's, it's, okay. Um, take it over, Pam. Yeah. I'm just going to sit here and okay. drink. <laughs> um, te technical difficulties. I don't know what you want to call it. I'm having some difficulties, uh, possibly, um, encouraging the American culture, but I can encourage this echo game that we're witnessing right now. Limited duty, uh, looking to come back within this second round as we head to the joust and, uh, Hopefully, Haldor can head his way back into the booth as well. And we saw this headbutt as well in the previous round. I'm at a loss for words. <laughs> never never has a stream been so horrific, but that shot is terrific from Mozzie. Off of an alley-oop play, see Jason setting it up. Uh, good connection. That time, nine seconds. So I guess by, uh, by ethereal standards, paltry effort on that joust. I've expected four. Jeez. But otherwise, nice pass <laughs> and a uh, nice play. Yeah, I mean, we saw that exact uh, mirror headbutt in the first round as well, coming from Ethereal, always starting out strong on that initial joust. So now Wit uh, trying to make a response here, clearing it over to the teammate Burbs. Burbs, got great reset, uh, only had a moment to, to find that pass back to Speedy. And now with the recovery of Lima Duty, that's going to be QL crossing it down below to Burbs, and Burbs to Wit. Wit just placing it in there. And those are the ones, doesn't matter if it's cast number one or 1,000 or 10,000 one of these days. Those are the ones I'll just never get tired of. I, I love that it's as simple as it is on paper to execute those kind of uh, just crossovers, uh, driving on the goal. It's yep. always so pleasing to the eye. I love it. Uh, great teamwork there. The tied up. Yep, pleasing to the eye, and just the 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 goalkeepers just they it just creates like such such a hard time for goalkeepers in some situations. Mozzie with a 26 meter shot. <laughs> Powerful one at that. 19 meters a second. Uh, Mozzie is definitely in one of those uh, numerous players here at the, the top level who is just a crack shot. I mean, if it's an open goal, accurate. But 
even then, it's, it's just fast. It's fast as possible, in fact. So, nice hit. Yep, and even Ethereal with these regrabs here, just pressuring the passes coming from Illumiduti here, and it might work out for them. Yes, it will. The recovery there. Uh, see Jason now with the disc. Went for the clear and follow up with the regrabs. Wick grabbed onto it and a brilliant dodge there from Wit. Now looking at his teammates, eyeing them off. He's on the right side of Pac Man, finding the pass off the roof. That's going to be Wit. Uh, promising it over to Burbs. Wit now back to the shield. You talked about those picture perfect passes. And we just saw another slice of that four to five. Oh yeah, uh, that one. I'll I'll drink to that. Some more Doctor Pepsi. I'm never going to get <laughs> so used to that. You're getting it now. <laughs> <laughs> Very begrudgingly, but uh, that was definitely a uh, cool glass of water for Lima Duty. Looking cool, calm, and collected despite the chaos uh, of that defense. And will be QL Young now with a turnover cause in their favor, uh, sending it deep to the other side as they gather their stacks. Yeah, regrabs are there at the same time. However, the Illumiduity stack's getting inter interrupted there with those stuns. QL now trying to avoid single shot. Crossing it over to Wit. Wit off the bow tie, sending it right up there to Speedy. Speedy now, great passes here coming from Illumiduity. They've done this very well in the previous few minutes that we've seen here. Crossing it down below to Wit. Wit now in the trench. And we're backing it way out here. They're only down by one. Uh, still a lot of time to expend in this round, so their priority is just to look for the uh, maximized scoring potential. There it is again! Hold a save! Single shot there! Up top at the pocket! Couldn't drop it! So back to the trench as it's taken uh, by QL. Yeah, Illumiduti not letting go of this pressure here. They're maintaining these passes and a brilliant save there from single shot. The clear not going to work for them, however, as QL Young now with the disc have some pressure on him finding the pass regardless. Burbs with the disc going for the cross. In the cross inside the bubble to Burbs. The, the backboard play. We saw quite a few of those earlier, but Ethereal passing it right out from the bubble. It is barely grazing the bottom of the rim that time, and uh, it's going to open up maybe a shot attempt, but good job on the stacks. They chain together, get their regrabs fast enough to bother them before anything could happen. On the other end, uh, maybe a shot about to happen, unfortunately, bouncing off the barrier, so this is going to be just right back uh, to Ethereal as they get themselves back down middle and almost down the middle of the goal. We've seen quite a few of those long shots there coming from Ethereal, and that was definitely close indeed. Now a clear there from the right side through the right tunnel. The follow-up might be there on time, barely missing the disc there. However, the regrab certainly won't. Speedy now with the disc, recovering it and resetting it. Now here comes Illumiduity's uh, famous play, just setting it up for themselves here, making their way around the bubble, converging and placing the points in Speedy for the final two. Yeah, just able to work it in close enough. Four meters, uh, four meters in front of that goal to get that one in. Went for that same pocket up top again, so that almost uh, putting it at risk to be saved uh, again there potentially, just knowing the capability of uh, the goalies there. Whether you know, see Jason single shots gotten a couple as well. So uh, yeah, but it will work out for them. They take a lead here in the second round, looking to force that round three. But there is a well-rounded three coming in in a hurry from Mozzie. It's almost immediately, as soon as Illumiduti find those points, Ethereal are just so quick to shut it down. And Mozzie has found so many points from that exact same angle there. Mozzie's doing very well in these situations. Point blank, finding those three points, taking the lead for Ethereal. Yeah, absolutely. And now it's uh, back here on the Joust. And uh, let's see how Illumiduti reacts. They have 434 remaining, and so far we've seen a lot in the second round, in fact. A lot of those those front-facing cross passes into the goal uh, after some patient plays in the midfield with the, the passing, the positioning. So looking for more of that there. There's a cut uh, right to Wit. Has a little bit of space, uh, but no time. Maybe a rebound, though. We'll find the goal right above the head of the defense. Yep, see Jason stunned out there, unable to grab that one. And also, Crazy Kid dropping some bits in the chat there, so really appreciate there coming from Crazy Kit. Thank you very much. And also saw in the chat there, uh, Tifu in the chat saying, uh, is that is that, a, is that commentator Australian? What? Who is he? What's his name? I'm Pamwell. And also joined here is Palador. And, uh, I yeah, am Australian. I, Thank I, you. I, yeah, he is Australian. So we, we got uh, two Dr. Pepsis in the chat. Yeah. Well, over here to Wit, though. How about that? It's right in the pocket. Dr. Pocket. Uh, 11 to 8. They're up by 3 for duty. Brilliant, uh, brilliant response here coming from Illumiduti. I mean, it's it's so back and forth here, but it's just that as soon as one team finds those points, the other team immediately is trying to shut it down. And just Illumiduti 
keeping on and holding on uh, in this second round here. Ethereal have taken the first, so now single shot trying to respond here off the right tunnel, crossing it to JL, but the slap save there, and now looking to converge will be Illumiduti. And on the clear as well, so stacks uh, from either team now getting a little split up. Mozzie with the rebound, recovered, and sent. And speaking of sending, look at that. They just yeet themselves down the floor before the shot to tie it up. They find the clear, they find the regrab follow-up, and just an open shot, three points, evening up the scores here. 11 to 11. I'm in heaven. This game is great. And uh, not sure if they're joking or not. Is Pally real Australian? Palador, take it away. Uh, yes, mate. Crikey! I, 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 I! You guys say that, right? <laughs> Captain? <laughs> I think that's a SpongeBob thing, but that's gonna be Mozzie with the I can't hear you. Went for the sign. <laughs> okay. I said I, I! Anyway, single shot, fighting those two points, taking the lead yet again for Ethereal. How about that? With a dead I, I, single shot right down uh, the middle to, well, right through the middle of the defense, that is, to put them back within two, so, uh, or uh, up here by, uh, uh, by two, so. This has been a really high scoring round. I mean, round one was actually much the same. Uh, 11 to 17, or I guess vice versa there in favor of Ethereal. So kind of on a very similar pace at the moment. And every goal now, last two minutes going to count. Let's see. Yeah, don't don't check my math on this, but I'm really feeling like 70 to 80% of the games that I've casted here in Echo, the second round is almost always different from the first. <laughs> like, it's never the same thing. It's always, a, ch a team's going to be changing up something within the second round to adapt. And if, when looking at these plays coming from Illumin Duty, these passes have been crazy. So if that's the reason why they're fighting these points, like we're just seeing now, Burbs off the backboard, well, I mean, let it be, 13 to 13. Yeah, whisper words of wisdom, Pam. Uh, this is going right into the, the deep end of this round here. And the the difference really in this one is just that Illumiduity, they, they made that late run or the second half run in the first round. And they really were able to carry that over quite successfully into round two uh, thus far. I liken that play as well. They had two backboard passes. They changed it up. And now maybe switching it up to take uh, a lead again with just a minute left needing to find a pass. And they'll try to back it out, but nobody home. Ethereal have taken the first round here, so Limit Duty with the scores tied up. They need to find some points here to see this go to round three, but a long shot there, a long clear and stun from Ethereal. The regrab follow up's not going to make it on time, however, that pressure will work for them. It will be Mozzie now with the disc, crossing it over to the right side. No teammates there immediately, and it might be Limit Duty following up with a clear, but the awkward bounce working against them here. Both teams trying to struggle to grab this disc. The final clear, no, intercepted there by Jason. And a miss as well on that, that pass. One twice three times and I'm not sold on what the ending of this match is gonna be like but we we know it might be going down to the wire that said firing off it's single shot and they're up by two and not a lot of time remaining a limit duty I don't show if they can find these these last two points it certainly is gonna be cutting it close here a Hail Mary shot is required here from a limit duty four seconds I don't even think it's possible Ethereal might have just taken away the game with those final points there they're trying to find the headbutt play but it's not gonna work out in the end Ethereal will be your winners 15 to 13 it was so close definitely it it was possible, but just difficult. They had to go for essentially what you saw there, that headbutt play. And as we know, that can be very, very tough to control. Of course, we've seen it uh, done very well by Ethereal and some of those neutral jousts as of late. But uh, yeah, right down to it. And that was a big, big shot uh, to just boost them here into the win. And fantastic round and match on the whole. Yeah, I mean... I yeah, credits to both sides there. I mean, Ethereal just doing very well to find that initial lead in the first round. And what Ethereal did very well, which I can definitely respect in this situation, is as soon as Illumidotti, they they found that uh, those few points there, or they, they finally found their way back onto tying up with Ethereal. Ethereal weren't going to just, like, you know, sit and let that momentum carry them away. Ethereal were ready to respond, and especially Mozzie in a lot of situations, coming in clutch with those point-blank shots, which you can definitely give a pat on the back to. But yeah, as well as that, Illumidotti, Illumidotti just doing so well to just, main, to just maintain themselves in this game, in these rounds. I mean, entire, like we saw that 11 point lead in the first round and yeah. it, it's just, they, they did so well to bring themselves back up here. And this, the points just so close, 13 to 15 in the, lot, in the second and last round here. However, Ethereal taking it away and seeing all the GGs in the chat. Yeah, what yeah. a great game indeed. Yeah, that was that was great. Uh, we have 
Uh, the next match coming up really quickly here, which is High Voltage versus Onion. So, not gonna dally too much longer. Got a couple minutes until that match, and, uh, uh, looks like... Well, I don't have my invites yet, so if you guys are in the chat, get them to me. That said, for uh, Illuminati and, and Ethereal here, I mean... Uh, needless to say, and I mentioned this yesterday as well when we saw Ethereal on stream versus Project Mayhem. Uh, that one. Uh, also an exciting and uh, high-firing game. Went to three rounds there. But uh, this puts the Ethereal, let's see, at eight wins in a row here in the Master Division. Uh, that is immense. They have been absolutely on fire after, you know, maybe up and, uh, up and down start uh, earlier on in the season. But they've just been... You know, I, I really locked and loaded after those first couple weeks, and it's ex expressed here on the records, and uh, this is very interesting developments in the Master Division of North America. Anytime you can put any winning streak on, uh, that is something to take note of. Yeah, I wouldn't doubt you. I mean, I didn't even have to see the, the previous games to believe that one. Just from this game alone, I mean, Ethereal doing very well, and... Uh, yeah, as, as Pelador did say, we got High Voltage heading up against Onion relatively soon. So, yeah, stick around in the chat for that one. Paluel is just superior. Give yourself a shout-out. Cast the redeemed a cast a shout-out. That was crazy, Kit. So, uh, appreciate that one, crazy. And appreciate the bits earlier as well. Um, so, yeah, thanks yeah. for everyone stopping by us. Yeah, thank you very much for that. And with that, as I do get into the game, uh, we'll be right back. Just brief intermission, so do stay tuned. All right, everybody. Hello and welcome back to VR Master League Channel 1 here on Thursday. This is Season 3. This is Week 8. And uh, your channel point prediction polls up for two minutes starting now between Onion and High Voltage. So get your votes in. Uh, this is a diamond tier match here in North America. And on the casting end of things, you got me once again, Palador, joined by Pamwow, the doctor of castonomics. Mm and other things someone call me dr mm. pepsi in the call here and uh yeah great to be here we got onion heading up here against high voltage and onion i'm i'm always uh, it always puts a smile on my face seeing this team uh here for team onion i'm not not putting anything against high voltage i'm just saying i've got um a bit of history with uh some meme some meme image here with onion i mean if you ever catch up in the uh discord chat especially in the community videos i posted it quite a while ago onion yeah. uh doing very well with providing some dance moves for us that, and it was uh, that it was, was quite the, the treat that was the one that you you uh, were mentioning in the chat while it was happening i totally missed the reference <laughs> i knew it was a dance i just didn't know what one but yeah uh, glad to have both these teams in here they're definitely highlight worthy for a lot of reasons not just the song and dance but also just the uh the the dance of echo arena the backs and backs and forth back and forth mm -hmm. that's more that's more grammatically correct i'm a grammatician also grammatically correct uh that said yeah i'm excited for this one you can see there you know, in uh, the 9-5 and five record for Voltage, High Voltage, 10-5 and five for Onion. So, you gotta figure, in Diamond, uh, these two teams are gonna be very, very closely matched. 
Yep, and uh, in terms of uh, any uh, grammatical issues, maybe just try drinking some Doctor's Pepsis. I don't know, it might work <laughs> out for you. It works out for me. Um, You're the yeah, worst. With that said, <laughs> maybe. Uh, with but both the teams, I uh, believe <laughs> both teams, I uh, believe, getting ready to ready up here relatively soon. But uh, yeah, as you said, always expecting uh, something different from these from these teams. I mean, it's it's almost like the previous game that we saw. I mean, in between rounds, in between games, in between new teams, yeah. it's always something new. It's always something new, and it's always great to see. That's that's what keeps it so entertaining. Um, so yeah, with that said, both teams uh, should be readying up relatively soon, and. Burnsy in the chat there saying, hey, my old team. Hi. I'm I'm his old team. Uh, but yeah, what's up? Also, Flare, Frostpod, you're still cool. I, I assure you of this. Uh, as well as... Can't read. Here, let me... Let me... Embiggen this one, speaking of grammar. Uh, real... Real Disco Llama. There, that was a lot more easy than I thought it was going to be. Uh, yeah, welcome to the Twitch chat as well. Zombie Flesh. Stay away from mine. Uh, that said, uh, yeah, all of you guys hop it in. Glad to see you. This is cast numero 999 for more. Mm. So one one more nice. away and we're hitting that, that 1K. Yep. Paolo on his way to that 1K mark and uh, what, yes, a, what a mark that is to be putting here in the Echo universe. And uh, mm. as I say that, I don't think I don't think we're really um admiring that. It's not just the disco llama in the chat, Palador. It's the real disco llama. It's not the fake. We have the real one. So like I don't. I had I don't a running with the fake one. Not a pleasant experience. Let me tell you. Yeah, exactly. So the fact that we actually have the real one amongst us, it's like yeah, wow, crazy, crazy, crazy stuff. Very, very. Uh, but yeah, so. Uh, uh, elsewhere on the schedule tonight, just to give you guys or uh, clue you guys in, let me pull this up and take a look. Uh, we do have several in a row, uh, more than several, in fact. So we had Ethereal versus Luma Duty just ended minutes ago. Uh, getting right into High Voltage versus Onion here. Just making sure I pinged them, and I did. Uh, then following that, we have in half an hour, roughly, Wave Check versus Synergy, and then uh, uh, Mayhem versus Aurora. So yeah, got I got a stacked schedule. Hopefully we keep up. Yep, yep, yep. And uh, as you said as well, that. We're at, we, this is, uh, I believe, your 999th game, so uh, next game always going to uh, bring a lot of excitement um, to the grounds here and to the Twitch chat. So, yeah, with uh, that said, um, hopefully they did get the ping, and uh, I think they will be running up soon. I think they're just they're talking amongst themselves here, but uh, yeah, yeah, also... Um, we have the uh, chat to keep us company here, so just even looking in the, in the chat here, um, some predictions here coming from Flair or, or Aurora win coming soon. Um, Burnsy emphasizing that with that scream of of, of sheer um, uh, pride with Aurora there, and uh, yeah, um, I, I don't know. I honestly can't. I I can't say uh, which team will be coming out on top because I've seen so many games with with these teams here in the Master League, and it's always it's always something. There's always something changing. So I I honestly can never uh, place a bid. On who will be coming out on top that's why i can never um place a prediction in the chat there uh which palador provides because it's just it's always something different in the and i i want to keep my bits yeah well i mean some you know some people uh go all out some people are just just uh cautious with it you know careful careful gamblers and some people like uh like andy andy w a few weeks ago just loses everything <laughs> uh, every now and then but yeah, uh, of course you can redeem those channel point rewards if you, you know, watch and support these stream uh, these streams. You get, uh, you get channel points just uh, by virtue of that, and you can redeem those channel points to get uh, your matches casted um, on a more kind of guaranteed level. You know, we have so many teams, so uh, a good way to kind of ensure for a lot of the teams that we don't get to stream near, uh, you know, as much as we'd like. That's another good way to do it, just by coming in here and supporting in that way. That said, round one, about to start here, so once more, I'm Palador, that's Pam Wow, and this is High Voltage versus Onion. Yeah, and although Onion did take that early dub with that Rock, Paper, Scissors play there in the beginning, High Voltage responding quite immediately with Goran Jr.'s first two points of the round. Very quickly on the passes too, and that's another thing that I've observed and often uh, admired and, and praised on stream here from High Voltage. I, I really enjoy the amount of team play they put together. They are a team who, in 
there are those drives into the bubble in a, a three second span, three, four second span, they're gonna put in, you know, three, four passes as well, uh, just in quick succession uh, to get themselves goals a lot of this, t a lot of the time. Now, uh, Onion, yeah, on offense here for them now. Yeah, well, I mean, you put yourselves in the goalie position right there for that second. I mean, you have that pass heading its way towards your backboard. You turn around to the backboard and immediately that pass is just going right back in front of you. Um, so it's just very hard to keep track of in a lot of situations, which is why passes can become so important as we see Beat receiving that at the backboard and finding those two points. Yeah, no, kind of a soft one there, I think, uh, only because uh, maybe just a brief miscom on where the receiver was because it was a softer pass but probably diveable had they known where to dive approximately that said they're going to be slowed down on that play to get a nice goal so tying it up and just a minute and a half in as fire ninja rolling out as well quickly over to Gorin on the other end uncontested uh working it up the floor and trying to evade the stack uh to some success yeah, great pass back there to Fire Ninja, giving them some time here, crossing it out down below. That's going to be Lolzy with the disc. Might go for the cross. Brilliant cross to Fire inside the bubble. Two points, high voltage taking the lead again. Wonderfully executed, and that's exactly what I'm talking about. You see, it just once they're in that bubble, uh, it leaves the hands, and before you know it, it's, it's in the goal. Uh, they are quick, they're accurate, so I like that. Uh, very much so. I mentioned in the last game as well, of course. But um, the Moose now on the launch and seeing what they can do. Hopefully not turn it over uh, if they can help it. Yep, and that's going to be Polka with the disc. Uh, playing some, oh my goodness, playing some Polka with that mind game uh, there on the floor for a second. Just went back and forth and that close shot on the right side of the post. And Beats trying to send that one through, but that's going to be picked up now by Pancake for a moment before Fire Ninja takes that away, or uh, Goran rather. Goran though being contested pretty, uh, pretty closely, but so was Lulz. Uh, credit one single Pancake there uh, with a clear and already well prepared on the boost from Onion, so that's nice, but the recovery there is a little bit missed time, so that does allow an extra second or two for the defense to get in the goal. May not matter as one more cross actually oh. just misses, and that's back to Goran. A few unfortunate events there for Team Onion. The re-grabs were there immediately, and it was great to see. And that pass was definitely there. That play would have worked out. Just two unfortunate timings there for Team Onion. As now High Voltage look to respond here. It's going to be Fire Ninja taking a step back, allowing Goran to make his way inside the goals there and take those points. Again, wonderfully executed. And the tough thing about that, it's almost a, a double whammy, right? Because... Uh, because of these these passes slash shots are coming in so close to the goal so close to the goalie uh, um, Maybe not on the last occasion the angle was a little low, but just You throw it and bakes basically it can be a shot or a pass But they're very good to uh, try and prioritize either one you're forcing the defense to react as one more Right back at them. That was just like the other end uh, So beat kind of beat for beat I suppose here on onion side uh, trying to match high voltage it's passing game very nicely at that yeah i mean well even looking at that play earlier exactly what you said i mean you can you can either uh, fake even fake out that shot like you are gonna grab it then just go for that cheeky stun on the goalie there and just find those three points but in in some situations uh some players might want to go for the more safer play and try to go for a quick anchor like just forcing into the goals there regardless High Voltage do find those points there for themselves. Onion responding. So now High Voltage with the disc. Lol Z crossing it over to Duke now with the disc off Bowtie. And deep on the clear. And same with the goal. But the goal was open. Not made on the three-point attempt. Back to midfield. A few players there. Uh, will be Fire Ninja through uh, all of that defensive uh, intensity. Gets it off to Goran Jr. Now they have uh, not really numbers, but they do have the cutters. The defense is off balance. There is a Fire Ninja. One more pass. And then the finish not oh. there. A dinging and then Pancake cle uh, clearing off of that. Yeah, Pancake, from my perspective, didn't even look like he was even taking a look at that disc. He just stuck his arm out and knew exactly where that disc was coming from. Found that clear. However, will it work for them as Duke now with the disc? Going for a Duke there, clearing it over to the left. Lol Z now with the disc off Pac-Man. Has number 11, Duke, on the right side, crossing it down below. That's going to be a play inside the bubble. No passes there. A direct shot. And as often is the case... It's the Duke of Hazard going in on the goal. Uh, nice work there, Lulz. The assist as well. And shout out Lulz, as always, for providing those awesome uh, intermission videos that you see and, and content for the YouTube channel as well. Uh, a large part of that creation team for those recaps and what have you. So shout out, as, as always, to, to 
the hard work being done there, because uh, cool stuff that they're making. Yep, indeed. And now Pancake going for that clear or that shot. Regardless, it could work for them if they can follow up on here. And that pressure of that clear there from high voltage, I mean, so that's exactly what we talk about sometimes here. I mean, you can have a shot at a clear there, for example. You you really want to make it work for you. Otherwise, like teams like Onion will converge on that clear that's been left astray and they will follow up as we see now. A lot of pressure here. Single Pancake taking the time, taking a step back, allowing the teammates to make their way around. That's going to be Porker now, sending it down below to Moose. Oh. Moose went for the backboard shot with the save. And Duke with some more great plays, offense and defense either way. Uh, back into it, uh, the goal covered off here by Onion and a good dive. One single pancake with the one single take. And now they're right back into the offense, uh, but not far behind on the defense is the stack from high voltage. So they're able to get there with a lot of time. All four players, in fact, off the bounce. Yeah, we saw Fire Ninja earlier taking his taking a, a glance back, making sure that the re-grabs from Onion weren't going to disrupt him. However, a, a single member of Onion just making their way up, hidden in plain sight, and just finding that steal. However, High Voltage responding here, and Duke finding those two points, now 10 to 4. So pushing them up by 6, uh, still... You know, a bit of time left, three minutes, so they're not uh, out of out of the woods yet. And uh, on the launch here for Onion, let's see uh, what they put through. And shout out real quick, by the way, Galactic Rift and uh, uh -oh, a rift in the connections for the side of high voltage. They do drop a player just as that Jousa had began. Now they do have a point lead here, high voltage. However, three points will definitely cut it close if Onion can find them here. So now single pancake crossing it over to beat beat, and that's exactly what they find, the three points. So now only a three point lead here for high voltage. Yeah, uh, great, great job to get that point off. I mean, I know a situation where you're missing a player, not, not ever ideal for high voltage, but uh, if you're on the opposite side of that, you yeah, take full advantage of it and just play on and uh, do what you can. So a timeout predictably being taken uh, for a moment, and hopefully we will uh, have have this back to uh, the remainder of the round, you know, up soon and not too long of delays, because again, we, we do have a lot of streams for you guys today who are tuning in. So uh, excited to get through all of those. This game, highly hype voted and so far providing some very nice highlights. Mm. And if I can say anything right now, High Voltage has been my rock and roll. As I can see everybody in the chat there, Zombie Flesh, yeah, High Voltage. Couldn't agree more, mate. These games have been insane. These teams have been insane. And just waiting on this reconnect here for High Voltage. Um, yeah, close first round indeed. Two minutes thirty on the clock. So Onion more in more than in a in a great position here to, to come back here in this first round. Um, with two minutes thirty on the clock here, High Voltage will be starting off without just advantage as soon as they do head their way back into this game. But yeah, with that said, a close game indeed. And even uh, taking a look at um, in the chat again, Pally. What do you think about having more arena maps? Well, that's, that's been like a long time debate of sorts. I'm kind of on the side of... Uh, I definitely think it would be cool to see some customizations and things like that. And maybe for like alternative modes, but uh, because... Just, you know, my opinion, because of the, the whole sport-like nature of that. Like, uh, you wouldn't change, you know, a basketball court or a soccer field or, or a rugby, uh, rugby field, right? I mean... Uh, that the beauty of the arena and we're seeing it still yet we're approaching four years into echo at this point and we're still seeing players taking uh, advantage and new advantage of these new concepts new ideas i mean every single block in this arena every single ramp every wall uh, it, built with such such purpose and some of those purposes took years to even be clear but now you're just seeing it uh, utilized beautifully and i think that's the beauty of Echo, is that it's such a simple game on paper, just like a sport. You know, put the put the ball or the disc or, or the puck, whatever it is, in the goal. And yet, it's infinitely complex in the amount of permutations you get match to match. Yep, and also just wanted to quickly quickly have a shout out there for Burnsy in the chat, gifting that sub right to me, baby. Appreciate it there, Burnsy in the chat. And uh, yeah, um... Yeah, great, great. Uh, a, a huge thanks there in the chat for Burnsy yeah. lifting that sub as we now head back into this first round. High voltage with the three-point lead, looking to extend that lead Ooh. off the backboard, getting interrupted. 
Couldn't tell if that was pancake or mousse, but all I know is that was a not a piece of cake on the save. And now making their way down the floor, flying high, and maybe another goal attempt here. They got some numbers. The defense tries to recover deep down to the mousse, but no. Duke is there for another denial, a clear, and that's sent out of there off that loss attempt. One minute, 37 seconds left, but an overshoot coming in from high voltage. Yeah, the regrabs were there from high voltage, but Duke quickly collected it up and sent another three for Team High Voltage. And now it is looking a bit difficult for Onion to get back here in this round. Although still possible, Onion needs to find two threes to get back in here. But the first round looking very favorable for Team High Voltage. Absolutely. So, uh, one minute left. A quick score will be very pertinent here, down by the, the six points. And uh, really quick on the joust, no one there to recover immediately, but they might still have time, but uh, Porker will convert it. Now, I'm not sure if they wanted to go for a three or not, but uh, I mean, they, I think they still have time. You know, still, what, about a minute, but one of those situations where, uh, yeah, heat of the moment, uh, gotta go and just be decisive, whatever it is you do. So not wasting time at the very least. Yeah, even taking a look at the replay here, he was afraid that that goalkeeper would be in position and a three-pointer wouldn't work out in that situation. Uh, but even even once the goalie had overshot, it was it was too late. He had already set his momentum past inside the bubble there. So no three points being made there. However, two points uh, can still uh, work out in the end. However, with 30 seconds left on the clock, those three points definitely would have sounded a bit nicer in this situation as they try to pressure that bubble, try to pressure those points there, but unable to as high voltage are able to grab that disc and clear it out through that left side. Yeah, and that might have been the death knell there. Uh, will be high voltage. One more attempt. All the moves in the book, but gets stunned instead. Now booking it to the boot. And booting it maybe with a 3-2. And no more goals will be had. But a win will uh, be given and earned uh, from high voltage. But round two, this was a, a seriously close one. And as we mentioned to start it, uh, this off, both these teams, great records. So, hey, uh... Round two could be another one of those that we talked about, Pam, where it's just it goes the total opposite way. But all we yep. we do know and expect is uh, it's going to be competitive. Yep, it's going to be competitive. It's going to be crazy, and uh, you never know. Maybe Onion just need to power themselves up with that with the uh, with the one two seven three dance that they do so well. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I don't know. Maybe they'll bring it out. Maybe they won't. Maybe they're saving it for those rare occasions. Whatever it is. Whatever that, whatever the energy that that dance creates, they certainly might need some of it heading into round two. Uh, definitely doing very well in the first. Just need a bit more here coming into the second here. As high voltage take away the first round, and uh, yeah, um, yeah, that's that's all I got to say about the first round. I mean, crazy yeah. round indeed. Well, yeah, and a shout out real quick, Burnsy. We'll shout you out again. Sure, thanks again for the subs and and the shout out redemption. Uh, uh, Cosmic in the chat, Zombie Flesh again, still staving off the hunger, I hope. Tom Wellings, hopefully doing very well. And all of you, uh, the rest of you, Tubster, uh, again, Galactic Rift, uh, Fontax stopping by in there, and Leo the Great, good to see, great to see. In fact, I uh, have some more matches coming up, but of course, we got this second round in store for you, so let's get to it. Palador Pamwow here for round two of Onion and High Voltage. Yep, and as well, the Gifted Sub Burnsy extending the Tier 1 subscription through to april so thank you again bernsey really appreciate it mate and as we can see now one single pancake grabbing that disc initially getting stunned out and it will work for team onion he has porker grabs it and sends it right back to beat beat now went for the pass to moose now the question is would you go for the three pointer there or would you play it safe however onion are doing very well indeed in terms of passing and a great play there for team onion now uh, whatever the case is i mean that early into a round you just go for Go for the high percentage, high confidence shot, uh, regardless of pass, shot. I mean, they had a player right in the zone uh, to rebound or receive a pass, and that's what matters, you know, just getting points on the board. That's a good way to start any round, uh, as they do yep. go here for Porker. Look at all the numbers, and it'll just be the one. The Porker driving it in. A lot of bothersome defense there, and uh, even the best of goalies will have a hard time on a 4-1, and one, or 1v4, I guess. Yep. Yep. Porker. Colin Poker went all in there, just holding that disc up sky high and just sending it in. No passes. That's one of the biggest throw-offs in, in any game. It's just when you have a team that finds so many passes in the game and then suddenly, whoop, this one player just dives in head first, sending it all the way. It always throws you off. You're always ex expecting that pass. You're always ready to intercept some type of pass making its way on. But just taking it all the way, Porker doing very well there. So now four points to zero as high voltage attempt to return here.
Yeah, and chat pointing out maybe that, that first attempt wasn't a uh, pass so much as a shot, but as, as I was saying, right? Just the point is low risk because you have a rebounder there to catch it one way or the other. Pass, shot, or otherwise. That was quite the shot from Gorin with those junior eyes. What does that even mean? I have no idea, but four to two and the first two for high voltage at that. As long as you put junior in it, the eyes applies. And uh, mm -hmm. now high voltage two points down but those two points that they've created for themselves here maybe shunning down that momentum that onion Ooh. have created for themselves here a bit of a weak start to that just advantage a little bit uh, however didn't work against them thankfully no regrabs coming from high voltage there as the moose now with the disc has a few members on the right side and some pressure being met there from high voltage as that's going to be pancake on the double diamond looking for a pass a bit too soft uh, there might have been Due to the stun, uh, taking a little bit of heat off of the disc, but a good tap boost from the Moose. And the Moose losing it to Goran. Goran Jr. off the backboard into the bottom pocket once again, and it's tied up. <laughs> that backboard shot definitely, uh, I, was, I, I, got it, I, I definitely stood up for that one. I was looking very, very close to the post. It did ding its way in there, but Goran, regardless, finding those two points. So now evening up the scores. And uh, yeah, agree now after, after thinking about it and after taking a look back, scanning my memory. Uh, yeah, I mean, maybe it could have been a possible uh, shot on three there, just barely missing, but that's what Paladol, that's why uh, Paladol was saying it's always great to have that one member there to recollect it and find those two points. So that could have very well have been the situation there. So yeah, thanks for pointing that one out as we see the regrabs following out and pointing those two points out as Borka did get the hand or the head on it and uh, South goal being scored there, two points. See, it's the same on the casting end. Sometimes we just throw words out there, and then we have the other one to clean it up if uh, one of us just flub or have the foot in the mouth. Happens every now and then to me, I know, so... Glad to have Pam Whale there to recover, or vice versa. <laughs> it's a team game, even on the casting end. That's why we call you the Dr. Pellet or Dr. Pepsi. You're always there to just... just no one calls me that. Everyone. <laughs> How dare you? Doc <laughs> okay, Dr. Pelly. Okay, you know what? Someone get doctor education because I need to educate myself on these American slang words. I don't know how you guys talk over there. In English, I don't know. Fire Ninja with the disc in the right tunnel, clearing it over to Lols. And Lols with some dubstep. I pressed a few buttons, ignore that. Goran now, Junior, went to send it in, getting a bit, uh, getting a bit uh, worried there with that pressure from Onion. All right, and from the bow tie, just I'm going to wait until the... Uh, passes line up until there's an open player to hit maybe on a drive and you can see they're not in a rush They're up by a couple of points and even though we got a lot of time to spare of course It's just all about playing those percentages and as we've seen from uh, high voltage and really from onion as well I mean they've been looking for those great passes once they get it close to that bubble whether it's from the forward end of things or a, uh, To the backboard they just know how to score with efficiency. There it is Yeah, and, and dig did very well there. I mean if even if you took a look at that, he drew one player out towards him and found the stun immediately after finding that pass. So just eliminating that one extra man of defense here for Team Onion as High Voltage converged inside the bubble and found those points. So a brilliant play overall there from Team High Voltage as now Onion with the Joust advantage uh, looking to respond here. Maybe a little bit of a, a rush throw there. Wasn't bothered too much by the defense. So this is going to enable a punish by your ninja. Got the three-point headbutt. Stellar play from the fiery one. We've seen so many headbutts in our previous games, but it, this takes the cake. This takes the this takes the round, potentially. I mean, those three points coming in clutch, and what a play there. Three points now to high voltage. Yes, sir, that is another one! We had that gone in, I would have quit the game before my 1,000th. That would have been the end of this stream. Ridiculous. That is the third time I've seen it this season, and it never gets old uh, with these headbutt plays off the three. Clutch and heady as ever. And now for Onion, they need to kind of uh, hold it together because they're in big, dangerous territory of uh, having this start to pile up into maybe a blowout if they're not careful. And Goran's crossed it over to the right side. Now Fire sending it to back to Goran, and the slam dunk there for high voltage we nearly saw a back-to-back -back headbutt play that post just interfering there for a second as we do get a timeout for uh, for team from team onion i believe not sure but wow i would need a timeout after seeing that headbutt play there from high voltage that was crazy yeah uh, exactly so not not a bad uh, idea at all here because with those kind of plays those very unusual but hype building plays for one team, uh, deflating teams for the other, it's kind of good to be able to breathe and just, oh, uh, you know, uh, cool off.
forget about it for a second, get it out of the head, out of the discussion and such, because four minutes left, they're still only down by single digits, and Onion is a supremely talented team here uh, who can who can make those those uh, comebacks. I mean, let me put it into context for you real quick, because uh, checking this this out, uh, let's see, I have to do some quick counting on my end, but three, four, five, six, seven, eight of their last ten matches have been wins. This is not a team that has uh, had to eat a lot of losses whatsoever the last several weeks. They have been on a complete tear uh, here in the Diamond Division. Yeah, well, they're Team Onion. They're not the ones that cry. They make you cry. They're not going to lose. <laughs> so uh, they they will take those pauses if they can to regroup themselves and shut down any momentum. As mean, I mean, we saw that coming from high voltage after that headbutt immediately it, you could definitely sense that shift in momentum heading over towards high voltage so onion are definitely a, a, a respectable play here finding that pause four minutes 13 still on the clock here so definitely enough time to head back into this round possibly bring it to round three but yeah high voltage taking a big lead indeed yeah, and I'd like to take a quick uh, opportunity as well to shout out our sponsors here in VR Master League Season 3 uh, and Echo Arena, HyperX, ca uh, casting here on a Quadcast S, and got Asterion Products, uh, ProTube VR, VR Cover, VRWare.net, uh, Fixed Gaming, who uh, provide the music you're hearing right now in the timeout as well, and a Rebuff Reality, so appreciation to all of our sponsors and everyone in there in the chat, including uh, Gems. Welcome uh, to the stream here. So you had to deal with an ad earlier on, so I just gave you another 20 seconds of ads. My bad, but welcome to the stream nonetheless. <laughs> uh, so, uh, hey, run the ads as long as you want because, yeah, I don't know, it's always satisfying hearing uh, sponsors being read out in a caster's voice. I don't know, I'm always I'm always interested in hearing uh, what the sponsors are to say. That's why I'm never, that's why I'm never, um, I'm never too upset, you know, whenever you, I don't know if, um, what sports you would often go to in America that uh, often have those uh, sponsors sponsors read out over so often? But at, in here in Australia, I mean, it, every time at the AFL after you after your team kicks that goal over the enemy team uh, kicks a goal, there's always those um, those sponsors being pulled up on the on the board, and there's always like a deep uh, announcer voice just echoing throughout the entire stadium, and it definitely does uh, give you shivers throughout your spine. So uh, yeah, always always uh, know, down to take a listen to those. You know, on that that kind of reminds me so people you know, who, who uh, know me and they're aware I'm a basketball fan, NBA fan. I know my uh, Phoenix Suns for the longest time. It only just stopped, I think, this season, maybe last season. Uh, but for the last decade plus, otherwise, every single time they'd make a three-point shot, it was always, the Phoenix Suns are proud to own the three-point zone, which it's a miracle I've not actually said that on cast and echo yet because you f uh, figure it's so ingrained in my head. But, uh, but yeah, yeah. Uh, Fulton Homes donates $100 to uh, Sons Charities is how, yeah. Anyway. Nice. I just got to shout that out as well because uh, I'm a little bit, a little bit fanboying and, and stoked here after a decade of a little bit of misery. Number two team in the league, baby. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, I was, I was even uh, talking with uh, some of the OC boys as well. Um, how heavily uh, the sport of basketball uh, actually does relate to echo vr and we've had a conversation on this as well i mean obviously a lot of sports uh do compare to echo i mean it's a it's a teamwork game and you need teamwork in a bunch of sports but yeah basketball i mean definitely takes the cake for me in terms of comparison i mean yeah so if, if you do have a, a sporty background um you can definitely compare the sport that you've played uh regardless of uh what what its components may be it you can definitely see its relationship uh in regards to echo especially if you are into basketball like my pal pally here uh yeah so with that said onion uh definitely nearing the end of that uh timeout relatively soon so I mean, I can I can definitely feel that there may have been a reset of momentum here. I mean, I definitely those although those headbutts definitely did uh, cause quite a spike there. Um, I can definitely I can definitely say that my adrenaline has cooled down from then. So maybe that's the same case for Team Onion. Yeah. Uh, meanwhile, I, I found myself. I, I believe I found the the pally door in the arena. I just kind of lucked into this angle. What is this angle? Huh. <laughs> Interesting. Interesting that's looking that's indeed. The well, spying angle. In Not any case, uh, we do have the remainder of this round. Four minutes left to go. Again, following this one, we'll also have uh, yet more matches. Wave check versus synergy immediately following this. So do stay tuned for that as well. But with that one single pancake launching out as the timeout does expire and getting it over to Porker, who has it stolen by that chain. 
for a second I was looking at the stream there and I was just echoed in my mind this is big brother as as that camera <laughs> placed in that angle as that shot placed in that angle there from high voltage very close indeed and beats right down the middle a good pass delivery there the number's not necessarily in their favor but neither is the time so they're gonna have to put up some scores uh, soon enough here still three and a half for mating they'll back it out to the bow tie now to the cloud one single pancake eyeing maybe that backboard but there's a good dive from duke Yep, Duke clearing it right through that left tunnel. The regrabs are going to be there from high voltage. Not going to land on it immediately as Onion, one single pancake, able to grab onto it and try to find that clear. The three-man stack from high voltage, they're able to, they're going to be able to grab that disc. However, intercepted there from one single pancake, who has found a few of those this game, and now sending it over to the bubble. And Duke again with another uh, take back. The, the stack just really quick, needless to say, for high voltage, and they recognize they are... Definitely at the advantage with this disc ping ponging back and forth. That is still going to to be high voltage advantage because uh, it just wastes that clock uh, and they don't have a lot of time for that. That said, uh, open goalie could use it, but instead getting abused by fire, getting the disc back and left lane clear. Yep, and you need to find these points, and they need, they do need to find them quick here. 4 to 13 with 2 minutes 30 on the clock here, as High Voltage look to deny this nice. as they go for the shot. Duke getting stunned out, however, as Onion now recover the disc and send, try to send it through that left tunnel. An awkward bounce might work them against them here. It's going to be Duke grabbing that disc, getting stunned out. Lols recovers it, sends it to the bow tie. Now Goran off the bow tie, making his way in, going for the cross, potentially taking it all the way. Yeah, some good initial defense there at the barrier, some good stuns. Uh, one single pancake has had actually a good handful of some uh, big stuns throughout that uh, the match so far to cause some turnovers but unfortunately for them yeah the take back by high voltage will put them up 11 points with less than two minutes here in this round yep high voltage have taken away the first and definitely looking strong in terms of taking away the second here as big grabs that disc through the left side might cross it over to single pancake making his way past the bow tie actually crossing it over to the right shuttle the right shoulder barely missing the teammate there's one single pancake attempts to recover the disc resetting it to moose moose getting stunned out by goran and goran finding that clear and with one minute 30 on the clock as well as those regrabs coming from high voltage this might just seal the end of the game for onion yeah beats on that uh, recovery has pancake at the pack so time is pretty much out at this point but they still can get some points on the board uh, that's a great leech look at that coming in hot from the moose but then lulls also the equally uh, awesome regrab on that disc that is as it flew by so the reflexes were pretty insane the shot will bounce though right back to duke I mean, we saw, we just saw it in that play there. The great plays have been evident from both teams. See Onion doing very well in that circumstance. Unfortunately, unable to execute as Fire Ninja executes those two points there. 17 to 4 uh, to, to close out this second round as they have found the first. And yeah, High Voltage definitely doing well to take away this game. Yeah, absolutely. And with yeah, 17 to 4 on the board now, it's just a matter of the clock running down again for... Everyone here tuning in is a very fast headbutt joust, though. Executed beautifully. Wow. From Onion. That was something stellar. And applause for that as the, the, all the players kind of interact there. You can see them reacting. That was that was nice. That was real nice. Yeah, I mentioned it earlier. I mean, the, the plays have been there from both teams. Onion definitely uh, proving to be very uh, a very large threat there, especially uh, in the aggressive side of things. I mean, we, with the, with that headbutt follow-up, the uh, the play off the backboard, they might just do it again here, trying to recollect Ooh. it, trying to send it in. The ding and save there from Goran to seal away the game. So now high voltage, two rounds to none, taking away the game. All right, and 17 to 6, so we're going to send you to the scoreboard here, uh, here, real quick. I, I took over your accent for a minute, and uh, we're yeah. going to go right back into the next round uh, to keep schedule. So we'll leave you here for a second, but we're going to be right, right back with your next match, which again is Wave Check versus Synergy, followed by Project Mayhem versus Aurora. So stay tuned.
Alright everybody, hello, hello, and welcome back to VR Master League here on Channel 1. I'm Palador, and this is going to be Wave Check versus Synergy. I uh, got PamWow next to me, and uh, I'm excited for more reasons than one, because the side of a great game, number 1,000! In terms of weekly casts, uh, this is a match, ladies and gents, as long as I did my math correctly, but everyone who knows Pam and I knows that the, the math sometimes doesn't check out, it, it kind of depends on the day. But, yeah, uh, what, 13, 14 months, 1,000 casts, hence why I'm wearing my, my old autograph version in, in, in uh, spirit of, you know, the whole community and such. This is from uh, back in uh, I Am Katowice 20, 2018 there for the Season 1 of ESL, VRL Finals, and, you know, had all the players as people hopefully will experience one day in Echo Arena and these gatherings and lands uh, in the future that we're uh, definitely hoping to have. Uh, yeah, getting the, the signatures, getting all that community spirit in, so, yeah, uh, love you all, just on that note, but, with that said, PamWow, how's it going? I'm, I'm going good, and, uh, yeah, again, a, a huge round of applause here for Paladol, huge congrats, mate, 1k, drink to that, definitely, uh, yeah, definitely drink to that one, someone call Gilligan, someone <laughs> say clink in the chat, because, yeah, clink. definitely drink to that one, Paladol, uh, putting in a lot of work here, in the in the echo realm so yeah huge shout out huge thanks for palador and a huge congratulations yet again 1000 games palador wave check and synergy we're gonna be off all right so i'll wave and let's check into the match uh going to the first round joust here and thank you everyone there in the chat as well glad to have you guys joining all 76 of you uh and uh, over here it's First Joust going to be taken, well, by no one, because a big brawl and a pileup will finally go the way of Wave Check. And now they have the clear goal, but unfortunately will not make that getting stunned. Burden Boy, the recovery, as well as Average. Yeah, that initial Joust, both teams just meeting up in synergy there. Um, and just <laughs> unable to yes. unable to grab that disc in time. I'm trying to run in synergy with your with your puns with that wave check thing. Trying to keep it real to the 1,000. You know what I'm saying? AVG with the disc, sending it towards the right. That's going to be nah. Nah might just say nah as he tries to deny this stun, but getting stunned out regardless. Quota with the clear. And Pandu with the recovery, but another interception by Quotai. You know, I think 1,000 is more like my puns per minute, if nothing else, but that's gonna bounce off and into the recovery here by Crypt. And Crypt right into the Crypt of the goal, past the defender. What does that mean? I don't know, but uh, still, they'll be killing them. So effectively on that first two points, Wave Check gets, uh, gets it to go, but yeah, minute in Pam, and uh, like I said, it's, uh, you know, just one out of... One out of a thousand, weekly technically, so if you're counting previous uh, challengers, cups, and things like that, I'm probably a decent ways over a thousand, but either or, a thousand as far as the weekly matches are concerned, and uh, yeah, just glad to, glad to have so much growth and so many casters coming in, including you. It's always a joy casting with Pam. Oh, I'm, I'm great to, it's great to be here, mate. These games have been crazy to cast, and it's always been crazy to cast them alongside with you. And uh, yeah, even taking a look in the in the chat there. Actually, you know what, Gems? I'm not going to say it. It's the special 1,000 game. We're not going to we're not going to bring any tilt to the man today, because uh, he's our pal. And as we say that, not nah, with the disc saying not, nah, putting it towards the left, intercepted by Crypt. What, what I miss? That something's uh, to tilt me? I want to read. That said here, the recovery from Average and Clear actually passed the Pandu on um, that Clear to the station as well. I keep saying Clear, but more like the pass. Gotta give these teams credit because they are indeed energized and synergized, Pam. Yeah, you know what Gems said, Palador? He said Dr. Pepper. He said Dr. Pepper. Don't worry about it. And now the oh, Clear thanks. towards the orange side. Crypt with the disc, <laughs> sending it back towards the mid side. Quote with the disc, went for the clear, a bit of an awkward bounce there, so now gonna work against some synergy with the disc. Nah, has has possession and a great pass there back to Pandu. Alright, Burden Boy working it up the floor. They have Crypt inside the goal, crossing it over. This is gonna be a shot taken maybe a little bit early there. Uh, could have had uh, a couple more steps into the goal. They'll still get the recovery, and that one is gonna be good from Nah, assisted by Average. Yeah, even even listening to that. So, whenever I'm seeing nah, I'm I'm always going ah 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 nah nah nah. nah, nah, nah. nah. <laughs> even listening to you can hear the the comparison here. Like, you, I'm pretty sure you guys go nah, like nah. I kind of so that's weird. I kind of flip flop honestly. I I haven't decided definitively. So I mm. I'll depending on the play. Sometimes I just I flip flop. Tomato tomato, uh nah tomato. Mm. 
tomato, tomato, whatever you want to call it. Um, you know what? It, it works out regardless, I think, in my opinion. Dark now with the disc, clearing it back to Derpy. Derpy has a pass there to the left shoulder. Quote with the shot potentially getting stunned out, however. So Synergy doing very well to keep it out. But the reset there, Crypt with the disc, sending it right back up towards the bubble. Dark might go for yet another pass off to the left shoulder. He just took it all the way, but a save there coming from Synergy. And some stuns as well, back to back to back. I should say, just head to head, more like, as they will uh, just pile up on the, the disc and now trying to pile up for some boosts. But again, another brawl, another pile in the midfield that's going to be a release into a bounce attempt uh, just off on the catch, as well as a shot. As a uh, shield here, Dark uh, passes it back to the stack and oh, just squeezes it by Burden Boy, who got stunned last second, but they will still retain for synergy. Yeah, they try to force that clear wave check, but Synergy just on top of it, that intercept, great intercept there from Dark, cutting off that pass, cutting off the play there from Synergy. As they now follow up in Synergy with those regrabs, went for that immediate shot because they knew the regrabs were going to be there from Synergy, but unable to execute, unfortunately. So now still two to two. And Dark with the disc, Dark on a deep throw into the goal. And that is not an unusual thing to see. Just saw uh, Dark doing much of the same last time around that uh, they were casted, which I think a couple days ago, maybe if uh, my memory serves, but yeah, that is just a, a hot shot from 33 out, Pam. Yep, and in indeed a great shot there. Coming there from Dark, so now 5-2, to two, Wave Check taking a 3-point lead here in the in, uh, when we head to the later half of this first round here. Trying to follow up with another long shot there from Synergy. Unable to do so, however, they do find the recovery and a a, a slight dusty there, I want to say it was, but grab the disc afterwards. So not counted, rejected. As the regrabs come there, Nah with the disc getting stolen off of Derpy, trying to follow up and trying to take a stronger lead off the backboard indeed. All right, so it's seven to two, Derpy boy that time, but another situation where the numbers were just all, all against the goalie, you see. Uh, could have gone to a backward, a backboarded pass to the front cutter, uh, but instead just assaulting the goalie off the backboard shot. And yeah, with that, getting their offense in yet again as Average just uh, dodges past those stacked defenders and uh, not having to, do to, having to do the same. So yeah, switch it up again. Yeah, call those stacks, call them zoomers, call them boomers. Uh... Whatever you want to say. I don't know how to sneak boomers into a sentence. I'm sorry, zombie. Uh, regardless, uh, Derpy Boy now with the disc, trying to clear it through that midside. Burden, creating quite the burden here for Wave Check as he holds onto that disc on the double diamond, sending it down below to Trench. Trench now it's going to be Nah, Nah, Micro for the Ooh. pass. Kurt Crypt said Nah as he saved that one without a form of hesitation. But Synergy now recovering it, looking to follow Ooh. up yet again, Pandu. Or Boomer, as the case may be, with the Alabama Slammer. So Boomer Sooner. There, I gave you a few variations of it. You can pick and choose, but 7-4. to four, And that's going to leave a bruise right on the goalie uh, past the head. And, uh, yeah, they're going to uh, pull within three. <clears throat> yeah, I mean, Synergy not letting go of that pressure that they have as soon as they take that lead inside the orange section. And they try not to let go of it, and they're trying to force Wave Check into those clears that just work against them. And, oh my... Oh, I thought... Okay, I did not see Dark for a second there. I thought that pass barely missed, but they are aware of what they're doing here. Wave Check... Quote with the disc, resetting it back towards Crypt. Crypt now following it through. Great pass there to Derpy, getting stunned off, however. Pandu doing very well to try and clear it out. Burden trying to clear it out again. Crypt grabbing onto it and might reset it here. Oh, but Crypt had it just slip by and a tap boost as well. About the same speed, so goes for a second one. Nice moves by Crypt, including the duck. The right past the defender. It's flying by, and that's going to fly down low. There is a guy in the goal uh, that is uh, average there, diving out along with Burden Boy, trying to take that another tap boost. The goal exposed, but two rush on the shot. Of course, defense nearby, so intense is the defense here around the bubble, but a clear is a... Uh, Gonna be had maybe the second attempt as Nag gets a disc, but has it stolen by Derpy. It's back and forth, but going forward for the goal and another narrow miss. Yeah, now recovering it, that's gonna be dark off the left side. You can definitely tell how much pressure uh, can do for you in this game. I mean, these clears have just been forced out here from Synergy and Wavecheck, just nailing down the, down in the midsection, funneling it back to their team here. Dark off the backboard, went for the pass, unfortunately missing the teammate there. So still 7-4 to four here. Synergy just need 3 to get back into this round. And all the meanwhile, the defense there 
closing in, but good patience shown by Nat to get the disc, at least momentarily trying to get, uh, find the teammate. Unfortunately, a turnover again for them. A great shield coming in from Dark, but uh, just as well losing the disc to Derpy Boy as they make their way back up the floor and opt for the reset, the double reset, in fact, and I do uh, like that because it does open things up, but maybe a little too uh, quickly on the forward uh, movement there off of the resets. Yeah, but I mean, we can just, they can keep it all day. They can keep these pressure, this pressure all day wave check. I mean, you can see how they're forcing Synergy's hand here oh. in some of these situations. Derpy just barely missing off the top of the post there as Synergy yet again try to force that clear out through the midsection. Will it work? Yes, one final slap will put it through here. And Burden's trying to take it all the way, creating that pressure, forcing that backwards clear there from wave check. Went for the backboard shot, unable to find it, and they clear there from wave check. Yeah, now positioned out very well for Synergy. Maybe looking to bring it within one. There it is. No burden, but maybe one off their shoulders. It's within one point and a great pass from Average uh, to cap that off. It's less than a minute left here and they're within reach. Boy, did Burden do very well in that play. That that Just forcing that disc out through the midsection and then being available for that, those points there. Uh, just doing very well for Synergy here. 37 seconds left on the clock. Those regrabs Ooh. might do them well here. Applying a lot Ooh. of pressure. They are only a point down. They can find it. Pandu trying to send a blow to shield to his teammate. Unable to miss. The rebound is there. The stun from Dark. Yet a stun upon Dark. Burden going for the shot. Getting saved out there from the keeper. Getting rebounded out. Synergy still have the disc here. They're looking to find these points. 15 seconds left on the clock. It will oh. be worth it. Wave check. Trying to hold on to it. Trying to slap it out. That bounce might work against them here. The recovery from from Burden off the left oh, shoulder, getting wow. stilled. Oh my God, Derpy Boy has come in clutch. That was such, such clutch and dangerous territory, but coming through in the end was wave checked by barely the skin of their teeth, the fingertips. Uh, that was, that was intense, ridiculous. One point victory in the first round. That could have gone either way. Uh, the fact that that wasn't scored, Pam, those last, that flurry in the last 30 seconds is amazing. Yeah, Wavecheck doing very well in terms of keeping it out, but Synergy, I mean, just converging around the bubble, they're just finding, trying to find those points there. It was definitely, uh, we entered a realm of chaos for a few seconds there. Can someone redeem Shower for a second in the chat there? Hydrate won't be enough for shower. me in this situation. <laughs> yeah, someone redeem Shower. I'm sweating all over, but sure, the players I'm Same. assuming here, Wavecheck and Synergy. Uh, we're going to be heading into the second round soon, but yeah, Wavecheck doing very well to hold on within those last few seconds there. As, uh, yeah, they take away that first round. Yeah, and just taking a quick look at that as well, the stats, that is to say, I mean, three out of the four players scoring on either team. Uh, wave check, three points for Dark. Yeah, Derpy with two and three saves. Crypt with two points, also three saves. Very symmetrical there. Uh, over on uh, Quotai's end, one save, 19 stuns. So leading the brawls on uh, his team there. Synergy, meanwhile, average with a couple of assists. Now with two points, two saves, 21 stuns. He had two points for Pandu as well. Two points for Burden Boy, and then one in a assist saves and steals so a lot of stats being shown and uh we're gonna go back into the second round now and hoping for an equally close one as we continue into what our third match here in this series of streams continuing to go on uh with this uh, launch neutral and uh will be a headbutt but just a little bit messy as it goes to the midfield yep and also dropping in chat frost happy 1000 cast pal you couldn't agree more good on your pal at all congratulations and pandu trying to recover that disc and uh the regrabs there from wave checker definitely applying some pressure that's going to be crypt finding the steal might set it up towards his team teammate possibly unaware and unready on that right pole however the pressure is still there the recollection is still there as derpy boy feeds it to crypt but the intercept from nah and off into the right uh, side of the field, see all the boost gathering, but the regrabs are kind of missing connections from both teams. So uh, splitting apart now and trying to maybe find some more clears and even a shot attempt knowing that's uh, trying to prioritize that side wall. So everyone just going, well, everywhere, as you can see, it's just the one end to the other. All the players leaving the goal there for a moment and they're going to be punished off of that burden boy. Oh boy, three points. Great angle there from Burden Boy. Took the advantage of those regrabs not being there immediately from Wave Check. So was able to find that snipe in the bottom pocket of those goals there. So three points heading over to Synergy, taking the lead in this first round. Not too happy with the first. So now with the Joust advantage, Wave Check taking it away. 
And uh, to Dark now with the disc. Dark has uh, the lineup on the pass uh, over on this fast rollout. They might even have the lane, so couldn't quite punish on that one. Uh, like Synergy had the last play around, but looking like a rebound still. Maybe it actually just missing a grab, so let's see again. There's Burden Boy. Now they lost the first round, but this is a great start to the second. That is almost in. Picked up at the boot. There's Pandu, but Pandu getting it booted out by Crypt before Burden Boy sends another one. And the dunk from Burden to average on the alley. Oop. Synergy just not letting go of that pressure there. When you're forcing that defensive player to try and force that clear out, you're going to have members ready to grab that disc and feed it right back in there. And if you can maintain these attacks on the goal, you are going to find those points. So now Synergy with five of those taking a strong lead here in the second round. However, wave check not letting it get to them. Dark Great Duke there, resetting it back to double diamond crypt. And uh, Derpy Boy now with a disc. Uh, Derpy sending it to the trench there. Now, one of the defenders stranded a little bit, so they maybe could have pressed that out, but actually rejoining now in the front line. So they'll have to play it a little more slow and look for their angles. Uh, diving out, and we'll have an open pass to Crypt, just waiting ever so patiently, but drags it right into the reach of Nah, who does get a clear, does go for the boost with Pandu, uh, as do the teammates, and dinging before ringing, and it's average, and they are seven points up. When those re-grabs just come rolling in at the same time, you can see it on the map as well. Wave check and synergy just moving in here at the same time. Can't use the synergy pun too much. I'm trying to avoid it, but they are. They are moving in at the same time, and it's just you you, you always wonder what's going to happen at the other side of that re-grab where the disc lies. And with that said, synergy taking those two points and trying to pressure this joust advantage here off Pac-Man. And uh, yeah, simple pass back to Crypt there. Wave check maintaining that possession. Yeah, when, you know, Pam, when you go for the puns, you got to pick and choo-choos. You know, train yourself uh, in order to get it get it timed just right. You know, space it out a little bit. But that said, Quotai, they got some good spacing here over on Wave Check. They're still trying to search for that first goal. Yep, and Crypt now off the boat tie. That will be a potential pass here on the backboard. However, Nah read that and went for the clear. However, a bit forced as Dark grabs it from the shield section and found those two points. So still within the realms of this second round, wave check looking to come back. Needed it and got it finally there after, again, round one was seven to six. So a very, very narrow win, suffice to say, but super competitive in this round. Uh, or last round and looking for the same here and, you know synergy of course would love to see that round three as would we here on the stream as dark having it taken by average and looking to increase that average on the scores because they have been off to a hot shooting start but now a firing off in the midfield taken back by derpy yep and that clear just passing the trench there and a single player quote behind the behind the backboard Either he was disguising there or whatever it was. I, no, no one noticed that play there and just found those two points. Um, yeah, I, I wouldn't suspect that if I was on Team Synergy. <laughs> yeah, uh, so Quotai going to the backboard and back-to-back -back scores. So this is where Synergy has to be careful uh, because two, two shots in a row is one thing, but three is where it kind of gets tricky. That's where you start getting a little worried and suddenly you've lost the momentum you thought you had when you're up by seven points, uh, verging on a double-digit lead and then to have them bring it back. So need to score here. Very important that they do so halfway through this round. Uh, let's see how they execute. Yep, nah, definitely doing well to avoid the member Dark there. Went for the pass after being overwhelmed with that pressure. And that will work out in the end for Team Synergy. Burden placing it in from the backboard. And a brilliant play there actually from Nah. Doing very well. He first of all he avoided he avoided the player of Dark. So then allowing his teammates to make their way around the bubble for because Wavecheck already had all their plays in the bubble, so it wasn't losing anything if he did that. And at the same time, feeding it back to the backboard. And uh, yeah, doing very well in that situation. And an average there, just waving off Crypt, or maybe vice versa as they go on defense. A nice steal, but it's stolen right back. Derpy says, uh, no, mine, and sends it right back down as they try to find some points. Bouncing, uh, not quite flat, but into the perfect space. There's Dark, and they bring themselves uh, back onto the, the scoreboard as well to react, and just as competitive as the last round, it seems. Yep, so now three points. The only difference for these two teams here, Wave Check and Synergy. And Wavecheck have taken the first, so if they can come back here, we'll be taking the second. Synergy looking to take a stronghold of this second round so we can get into the third. Nah with the disc, trying to avoid Dark there, doing very well indeed. Crossing it over to Burden. Burden now 
crossing it back to A AVG on the right tunnel has has does have Pandu on the left side micro for a lane swap there indeed he will crossing it over by the trend section Pandu and a deep cross will be cut off nicely by dark so too far away and as is that uh disc uh, into the bubble so just missing the handles looks like now is there but then lost the grab fortunately pandu still gathering that one sends it to the midfield and you know I i'm noticing i mean you can see it though every time that disc is gone there these teams both of them are so quick on the grabs and even back into the goal there on the defense so nice work and even nicer work it's average with some master work and here come the regrabs from both teams. They're trying to collect that disc. Derpy able to grab it first and sending it right back to the blue side bubble Ooh. there. All converging on that disc. Very scary indeed for a few seconds as that disc was led astray. Quote with the disc now taking a hold. So these second opportunities, they'll, they'll, they'll kill you, lad. I mean, they're, they're just, they're tough. They're tough. And well, that was some stuff from Quotai. One way or the other, that got into the goal. Yep, Quotai trying to tie up the scores. Yeah, eight to nine. One point is the difference here. So, I mean, I don't know uh, what synergy are looking to pan do here, but Wave Check definitely bringing a lot to this second round. Two minutes 30 on the clock. All right. So, yeah, the time, not, uh, not much of it left here. Just down to the wire, the clutch time, the crunch time. But the thing is, this is so... Basically a mirroring just what we saw last round as well, right? The one-point victory going to wave check right now a one-point lead to synergy So they could be eyeing that victory here real soon uh, if it pans out for them But dark is uh, trying to send it over to that stack. They will split up to catch up to the disc So great spacing uh, despite all this speed all this uh, Franticness unfolding Pam. It's dark with another pass there into the finish, but average again He is absolutely hot on the defensive end now the last couple minutes yeah, definitely nothing, nothing uh, less than nothing less than average there from average. I mean, doing very well to keep that disc away from the goals there. However, wave check not letting go of this pressure. Quotai with the disc now off Pac Man. Micro for the cross here inside the bubble does have players converging now, taking their time, allowing the players to move their way around the bubble. Went for a, basically a bounce to themselves after the first pass didn't quite work out. They're still trying to grab onto that disc, getting stunned out. Average trying to find and trying to pressure it. However, dark collecting it now. One minute twenty two on the clock. They need to find some points here and take away the lead if they want to take away the game. Crossing it over to Quotai. Quotai went for the pass inside. The momentum shifting off the pass a little bit there. So Crip now recovering Whoa. it. Went for the send, but nah, read it. Oh, that was going to be a great pass with just a beautiful dive. So necessary as well to make that uh, make that play work in their favor. But again, another rebound will be had thanks to the speed. That collection over to the side. And oh my oh, goodness, whoa. the ding, ding, ding. But no winners there. That's out of there. A double ding left, just making the disc just disperse out from the goal. I've never seen that. And Pandu just not letting the disc is just not going to get into the goals today, Paladin. Ridiculous, Pam. They are putting on some shows here. This is of the utmost intensity. They got 30 seconds left. One way or the other, one of these teams trying to make some closure as they go right down. The goal exposed, and it's lit for the two point hit. Synergy, they need to find three points now if they want to be able to get themselves back into the third round, but it is going to be cutting it close here. We saw this earlier as well. I believe it was a limit duty with Ethereal. And we did see this earlier indeed. So possibly a headbutt play off the just advantage. Anything will do. They need to go for it. Five seconds left on the clock. They need three points. The time is running short. I don't think they will be able to find it in time. Synergy. Falling in the second, wave check maintaining the lead with those last few plays there. What a clutch. What a clutch indeed. And that is that is some heartbreak hotel as well from uh from the side of center because they were so so close to getting that third round guaranteed, but then as we often point out is the case, right? You're getting down to the wire there. Uh, some amazing, and I do mean amazing saves. That was some fantastic defense being put on by Synergy, but the rebounds, the rebounds, the, the second, third, fourth attempts, and finally, you gotta figure one of those are gonna go, and they did. Uh, clutching it up, though, defensively for a while, and then wave check just putting the final punch in uh, on that goal. But that was a great, great series, too. Uh, both rounds decided just by one goal in the last, you know, last possession, basically. 
Yeah, I mean, a, a brilliant game indeed. And if there's something that I can definitely take away from just looking at that game overall, I mean, we saw so many situations where both teams were able to actually do this, just locking down the other team as soon as they were in their defensive region. They were... We saw so many great saves, especially a brilliant, uh, so many brilliant saves, especially from Average there in some of those situations. And although Average did find those great saves, it, I feel like it wasn't matched with that too great of a clear that was going to work for them because Wave Check were just there, ready at that mid side. They collected that clear, almost deeming the save not useless, but just kind of it just it was it worked against them if if, if i can say that uh without trying to bully um the averages uh clear in any in, in any way or form there but yeah wave check just they did very well in terms of locking down synergy in some of those situations but on the other hand i mean synergy did the same thing in a lot of situations so it definitely goes to show how much pressure uh can be applied in this game yeah, uh, well, pressure was high. I mean, we, again, both uh, rounds one and two, especially towards the end. I mean, that was some of the most high pressure situations that you will get in, in Echo and in sports. Uh, the beauty of the nature of the beast that is Echo Arena and, well, those two teams beasting indeed in those two rounds. Now, that said, uh, got the next match coming up rather quickly here. I was just getting into the match, but it seems like I have joined an empty server, so I'm anticipating server switch must be reality. Uh, but we do have Master Tier, Project Mayhem, Aurora, that's right here on Channel 1, so uh, we'll get that going up next, but I'll, I guess I'll be awaiting some more invites uh, before that happens, so not in terrible rush or anything, but uh, yeah, uh, Pamwell, uh, thanks for, for joining in this uh, these last few streams. I don't know if we're, you're still going to be here for the next ones, but either or, those were a fun three. I'm glad you were here for my uh, my 1K, my 1,000th one uh, cast, at least among the weeklies. Uh, that was that was a fun one to do it on, on uh, at the very least. I mean, couldn't ask for a better a better match, except if maybe I'd gone to three rounds. That's the only that's the only uh, <laughs> exception, I guess. But well, I'll be here for the 1K. I'll be for the 1K and one. Ooh. So. All right. be, yeah, I'll be here for the next one with uh, Project Mayhem heading up against Aurora. And hopefully you guys in the chat will be sticking by again. Again, a uh, huge shout out to Palado as well. The 1K today match wave check and synergy. <laughs> so yeah, great. Uh, great to be able to cast it here with Palador. And uh, also saw in the chat earlier, a lot of congrats heading there uh, for Palador. So yeah. They're saying, yeah, and I appreciate you guys in the chat as well. Uh, very, very kind of you guys stopping by on any given day. A uh, thousand or otherwise, I mean, you know. Got a thousand, ten thousand more to go, you'll see. Uh, take a drink. I shall, of course, although, see, then I have to stop talking, otherwise it gets messy, but... Lufu asking, uh, tell us a Pally Dad joke. Why do they call them pirates? Because they are. Oh, okay. Um, take, take, take yeah, a, take ah, a drink of Yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, on a belly. <laughs> get some braids? Maybe. Maybe. I'll someone also asked check. you to. Uh, someone also asked you to sing a lullaby earlier. I'm not sure how many redemptions uh, can be. Um, Who's going to bed? Be fulfilled here. <laughs> um, I don't know where where you where are these people from. Who was asking that? I saw it earlier. But you know what? It's a it's a highlight. My message. So are we are we really redeeming those, or are we just going to read that out loud? Palador, sing me a lullaby from. That was from Lil Hunavel. Hunavelli. Hunavelli. Don't want to mispronounce any. Well, uh, yeah, that said, uh, people asking about the next match here. Yeah, Aurora and Project Mayhem, I had an invite. I just don't have another one. The first one, I joined just as everyone was leaving the server. And I've yet to receive another one. So your guess is as good as mine. I'm just kind of waiting on waiting on invites one way or the other, unless my uh, my app is broken or something. But uh, I suspect, I suspect we're, we'll be fine uh, on this one, just waiting for, for those. Mostly on schedule, which I'm kind of happy about because you know how those three, four, five uh, matches in a row kind of get sometimes. But yeah, we're good. Yeah, we're good. Echo overtime on the good old 1K. Can't mm, ask for yeah, more. Exactly. Oh, missing. And uh, well, yeah, so uh, go ahead. Well, yeah, I was going to say, uh, and on that note, uh, it will put us to a quick intermission uh, regardless here. And as we get settled, I'll ping the teams and such. Get another drink or two or three. Uh, uh, the ambrosia that sustains me. And with that, we'll be right back. Uh, everyone in there, you stay tuned, or or else I'll 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 be devastated. Don't miss the 1,000th and one game uh, here on VRML Channel One. We'll be right back uh, after a short break.
blink your eyes and suddenly they're in your face with a stun and a steal. Yeah, not trying to recover on it. They do ultimately lit sending that one out. Sweet Tooth, the both of them getting down there. Sweet Tooth on far side. Lit looking to send that pass. But Aurora already in the bubble. Oh, are you kidding me? Thank you. It was the end. Steel Sky Diver's face. In his face, completely screened out. And somehow Steel got the grab on that. Are you kidding me? Long shot here off the backboard. Acorn's going to get a stop there. Now, trying to make his way, trying to juke his way. As a kind of a kind of a, a tiger and mouse situation now. Like, oh, a cat and mouse situation now, I should say. And uh, now the backboard <laughs> shot. Oh, my goodness. Oh, wow. Now, cat and mouse and passing. In fact, this one's going to be an excellent save coming through from Wolfo, but Bad Elmo taking it here. Another save from Neo, so brilliant defense, in fact, coming through from Neo. And now the stack's coming through on the other side. It's going to be a shot, and Grimey's going to take it, put that one straight in for the three, winning in the stack race there. Really precise passing. Now Nillywick just driving that in, but Alakost able to try to bait that shot, put his hands through the goal line and find that save, and that clears it to come through. But not needs to find their stacks, and they got to get possession. And now with possession and the shot, going to be Alakost. So Alakost making the plays there, throwing his hands in the air, a little bit pumped, and he should be happy with that shot. Double off of the bounce, but nobody tell him that he's going to put a cross he's recovering here as he walks in on the bubble strap. All right, uh, hello everybody, welcome back to VR Master League here on Channel 1. Getting ready now to start uh, with this master match, our second master match of the night, as a matter of fact. This one between Aurora, new to the Master Division here. Uh, this, this cycle, and Project Mayhem returning from Cycle 1. We saw Mayhem last night as well. And, uh, well, going right back at him again. So on the casting end of things, I'm Palador, being joined by PamWow. Round one, about to begin. Yep, I am here, and great to be here alongside with Palador in the booth. And what a great game we have in store for us today. Project Mayhem heading up against Team Aurora as we head into the initial joust. A great headbutt there from Project. And right off the bat, it's Steel Skydiver looking like uh, a batter, just battering it out of there, doing exactly what you expect almost. It's more surprising to not see those saves. That said, the shot was going to be grabbed. No look, I believe, by the law. What a snatch there being taken. <laughs> wow. You cannot slip anything past the law there as he just snaps that disc away from the goals there and sends it back. Yet another counter-attack here. We've seen about three of these already within the first minute of this game here as Palace now with the disc has the looking for a potential pass here down towards the right side. Yes, it will. Back to that's gonna be Van. Van off the backboard, taking it all the way. And Vanzi, the first two points after some stellar saves from really both sides of the floor uh the first one there from steel sky on the opposite end uh the law with that no look grab on a shot attempt to, to turn it over and get back to this end of the floor so nice work being put through for the first two and uh, yeah everyone there in the chat welcome to yeah exactly 1001 on the weekly cast uh, for me here but it's been a very strong night of matches yeah again shout out to Paolo. 1k to the name and now 101 Gotta love those Dalmatians as we see Palace now <laughs> recovering that disc and uh, taking it easy here, trying to maintain that possession. Saluna trying to create some pressure here onto them and it might work out for them as forcing these passes here might allow Aurora to converge onto Palace, but perhaps Palace holding onto the disc here. And now uh, looking to play it safe here. All members lining up around the mid side. Aurora trying to shut it down, trying to intercept it towards that mid section. However, that, that clear will make its way past them. Might make its way into the hands of Project. However, getting stunned out. So Moonface now clearing it. And with a shot attempt as well, Saluna going full throttle. Couldn't quite make that, but we'll get the disc right back. So sending it over to Steel. Steel to Saluna. That was a beautiful series of passes all up in a row. Tie it up at two. Yeah, at first, an immediate, such a close shot there from Saluna, barely dinging off the left side of the post, but able to recover it and send it right back in there. So now evening up the scores here, 2-2. Two to two, And now with the Joust advantage, we're going to be seeing Project Mayhem rolling out once again. And a shout out there, Burnsy. It's tier 1 gifted sub. Again here, this time to, uh, to Laker Chip. 
Oh, as a Suns fan, I don't know how that makes me feel, but still, uh, thanks for that. And over to Caesar. Caesar not uh, having any thanks. Instead, it's the law with a take and uh, sending it off the wall. Maybe even a shot attempt. Let's see if that's good. A little bit low, it seems. Yeah, a brilliant clear there from the law, and the, and the regrab follow up was nearly there, just barely missing. However, the law definitely doing well to recover this disc, sending it right back towards Van. Van off the back wall, getting intercepted there from Steel, and still skydiving down on that disc and finding that clear down towards the midsection. The regrabs are there from Project Mayhem. They did get there first, however, the possession not in their hands, as we see now Caesar off the backboard potentially from Saluna, and Saluna found those two. And the 22 found by, yes, yeah, Caesar to Saluna, but a nice dive as well by a Steel Skydiver on the other end. Of course, we mentioned how uh, that's one of the small things, the small aspects of Echo that is super uh, important for goalies looking to take it to the next level, right? Is just knowing also when you stay in goal and when the pass is long enough or soft enough to uh, be worth diving out instead. So you give no time for the receiver to make any kind of move. Yep, it definitely is a skill that that needs to be. Uh, you need a lot of practice in terms of reading, especially how how um how many plays you can make when you're attacking someone. I mean, you can you can just take it all the way in some instances. Don't even worry about a pass and completely fool a goalkeeper because they're expecting those passes and they're expecting to try and intercept something. So when you just take it all the way in some circumstances, you can definitely play a few tricks on the keeper there. But yeah, we've had quite a few great saves already this game. Now Palace off the outside in the bubble, trying to fend it back towards the law off the backside, finding those two. And four apiece here, the pace of this match. Uh, interesting in terms of the scoring difference, obviously a lot of uh, speed and a lot of firepower from these teams, but really it's been about some of these uh, some of these slow downs, kind of uh, finding out, uh, figuring out the game plan in between these lulls and trying to basically uh, you know, feel feel each other out. You know, get that that process in the initial minutes of a game where you kind of get into the rhythm and and feel the pace of it. And so far, this pace has just put them pretty deadlocked uh, in terms of scoring one after the other. Yeah, well, I mean, we mentioned it in our earlier games today as well. I feel like. These teams, it's like you 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 find you find the first round, but then you enter the second, and it's almost like it is a completely different team with completely different uh, mentality. As we see now, four to four, Aurora looking to extend that gap. However, Van with the save and the clear, the follow up potentially off the bow tie. B Love crossing it over, and a brilliant snap reaction there from Project Mayhem. Yes, up to uh, six points, six to four, but. Uh, 37 seconds expired in that sequence there since that last joust. B-Love, uh, maybe a shot of temper kind of as we saw earlier, right? Good shot to take, and then I had teammates there to recover in case it was a missed, and uh, that just the full effort being being put out there as the stack getting stunned at Bowtie nicely by Moonface uh, for a while, trying to get a leech as well. That's going to enable a lot of time and space uh, from that midfield play purely. Look at that, even a boost down for Moonface. So putting in all the moves, and that was wonderfully executed from Aurora all the way down the field. Follow that all the way. A brilliant play there from Aurora. Saluna so holding onto that disc, waiting for the teammates to make their way around that bubble. And at the last second, sending it over to Caesar, who put in those two points. So now tying up the scores yet again, 6-2-6, six, six, as Project Mayhem grab that joust advantage and uh, look to do something with it here. And welcome in the chat there once again, Manifold, Max, and Nico Rift, Lil Hanavelli, Newt, and Porker. Uh, good, good to see Porker back. And look at that, Marco, the, to uh, the goal for the nice shot, but it's still going to be only a two-point advantage. And you've seen n neither one is able to pull ahead, so this is kind of one of those rounds. It's almost like a, a chess match, you know? Yeah, very close indeed. So back and forth, it's... And it, just like a chess match, if if, if you if you're watching a fast one, uh, sometimes you just <laughs> yeah, yeah some, just like a chess match. Sometimes you just can't tell what's gonna happen next. What move these masters have in mind? Mm -hmm. And with that said, that's gonna be Moon crossing it to Caesar Van with a brilliant save there and going for a clear indeed. Yeah, uh, very, uh, you know, fast and often violent chess match, but a chess match no <laughs> less as Saluna takes the three. Oh, that is a miscue because you don't leave the goal open. Not for Saluna, 22, they're up by one. She's lighting up the shot. Quote Sir Dimwi there. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I mean, 18 meters a second, 19 meter goal. I was mentioned Mozzie earlier, right, for Ethereal, how Mozzie, one of those players who can really put in those uh, fast and accurate 19 meters a second throws. Uh, Saluna, another one of those players, absolutely.
Yep, and now we can see Project Mayhem trying to make use of this just advantage, sending it over from the law to Palace. Now Palace, aware that there is a keeper in the goal, not going to go for that immediate three-pointer, sending it into B-Love, and B-Love doing very well with that double windmill, trying to create some renewable energy. <laughs> Whatever it was, it worked, and found finding those two points, now taking a one-point lead. Definitely got them energized there, back up by one, as you said, and B-Love, the... Uh, always smart uh, veteran just does he, again uh, one of the uh, in my opinion just most well-rounded kind of teammates you can you can have just uh, plays any role wonderfully and uh, master of execution definitely here in the master division but being lost here and causing some division in the tunnel the law takes it back and as you said, Palador, it's such a close scoring game. We've been within two points of each team uh, throughout this entire first round. So now one minute 50 on the clock. If Project can find a few points, they will be taking a, a devastating lead here in, re in regards to Aurora. So now Van with the disc holding onto it, not letting go of the, the possession straight away. Back down to the Law of War. Might go for the backboard shot for all the emplacement there from War. Yeah, not just the backboard shot, but the fact that it was a backboard pocket so it makes it even uh, more challenging to save uh, ma even making me cough up a fit just like a well the goalie had a trouble had trouble coughing up a save and i'm again i'm just i'm not even good with the regular backboards not um, nonetheless those pocket ones so a lot of offensive yep. talent there to get that done yeah i mean Whenever you're in those goals, it's like you always find those those very low or very high, wherever it is, those pocket shots are always devastating and so difficult to react to. So just considering that it's going to be a backboard now that you have to deal with, it definitely does put a lot on the plate there. As Project Mayhem looking to find yet another few points here for themselves. However, Aurora doing very well to get themselves back, but fam with the steal and the two points. Now Project have found their momentum within the later half of this first round. Yeah, absolutely. And we saw... Uh, Project Mayhem again yesterday just as well uh, versus Anomaly so it was Anomaly Project Mayhem our master match last night and it had a very similar start there uh, for Project Mayhem where they took that first round uh, looking really good really strong there was some late game runs by Ethereal put through but kind of doing the same or at least something very similar as a Saluna that is a very similar sight which is to say a score from Aurora uh, and from Saluna only a few seconds into that uh, but unfortunately Time's yeah. not quite there. Time is not quite there. And although a brilliant play there from Aurora, from down all the way throughout the field, the passes were insane. A definitely a master tier play there. But yeah, unfortunately, time not going to be on their side here as Project Mayhem do very well within this round to maintain that lead and take away the first round. So now we'll be heading into the second one. And uh, yeah, what a great game indeed. You mentioned earlier, it's like a chess game. I mean, I couldn't agree more. These, It's been so close and just so unexpected, some of these plays. And speaking of unexpected, unexpectedly fast. I mean, the pace of these passes that we've seen, especially that last play from Aurora. I mm -hmm. mean, they've been lightning fast, these passes, and it's been exciting. It's been exhilarating to watch and yeah. exhilarating to cast there. So yeah, a great first round indeed. Yeah, absolutely. Glad to be here casting this match uh, again. It's our second master match of the night. Uh, once more, I'm Palador with Pam Wow casting by my side of the OCE region, but of course, always happy to have Pam all over the world. Uh, Twitch chat over there, welcome back to the stream, and thank you for uh, just being here throughout the night in these great matches. Um, Matt, Matt Miko, I see you there. Uh, glad to have you as well. And yo, I see what's up. I have a lot of people... Familiar faces both from streams earlier, you know, speaking of, there's Porker uh, stopping by as well. And yeah, glad to see people going in from the Twitch to the cast and back to the Twitch and back to the discords. You know, as I said, it's a big world, small world, whatever the case, big community here uh, in Echo that's growing. But, you know, glad to have everyone, uh, all the familiar faces every night and as well as the new ones that we uh, see from time to time. But round two, here we go. And, and, a, and a weird flex in the chat from Saluna. I'm not sure if she's trying to say, hey, I can I can read Twitch chat and play at the same time. Whatever it is, <laughs> Saluna, wake up, get back in the game. She has the disc now. She can't see what I'm saying. She probably can't hear what I'm saying. But regardless, Saluna has the disc now, clearing it back towards the mid side. And now uh, looking to converge on the mid side, however. Oh, it will work indeed. Still Skydiver sending it back down to Caesar. Caesar inside the bubble. Took a tumble side roll there. Whatever it was, found those two points, taking the lead. 
and rapping without a fumble. Nice job, Pam. And it will be Caesar the first two points for Aurora in this round, starting it off the way that they need to, the way that they want. Last time we saw uh, Aurora was versus Kangorillas earlier in the week. Uh, couldn't quite win that match there uh, in, in the two rounds. Uh, before that, also facing Anomaly success there. So Aurora, so far, Master Division has kind of been on this one win, one loss, one win, one loss type of streak. So, I mean, if that does continue, not to cast her's curse it, uh, that would suggest maybe this game could be theirs, but they still have two rounds to come back into first. Yep, yeah, and Selena doing very well to avoid that stuff coming there from Project Manager, uh, Project Mayhem, sorry, Manager. Now Moonface <laughs> with the disc, clearing it back towards the right. Selena Ooh. off the three-point great save there from Van. Yeah, Vanzi, the nice one, uh, but Saluna, the nicer one, and the stun, maybe a little bit less nice, but uh, don't think twice. The shot may be open, but now it's going to be closed. They got a three on two advantage on the offense. The dive, though, perfect from Moon, and Moonface doing exactly what uh, what Steel did earlier and what we were talking about, right? If, if you can dive, then do so. Leave no time for reactions for that offensive team, uh, for whoever's catching that disc. Yeah, brilliant awareness being showed here from Skydiver in that situation here. Now, with that said, Aurora recovering the disc and looking to make a play with it. However, Van intercepting that clear and oh. Lanky taking the shot again. Oh. Two dings in the goals, bouncing out. And I don't wow. know what's been happening, Paldor. It's getting crazy. Yeah, ding dong, that shot is dead, but let's see what they do with this. A stack coming in for Palace. And Palace uh, has the back pass to Vanzi if they need. They have a forward one. That's going to be cut off just almost. Uh, the Lost still managing to send it deep and now just trying to look for their grabs. Their first is Caesar recovery and B Love right above, right below, and so above, so below. There's the goal. B Love ties it. We said this earlier in the first round as well. Such a close scoring game. 2-2 two two here. Project Mayhem able to even up the score this year. But now Aurora with the joust advantage. With 7 minutes 30 on the clock. Still such a long round to go here. So now let's see what Aurora can do with this advantage. As they as they make their way outside the tunnels. The regrabs are there from Project Mayhem. Not going to be able to directly pressure the disc. However, it does work in the end. As the law is able to grab it and send it back into the tunnel. Back into the bubble here. And now they try to form themselves around it, but Moonface. And Moonface on that clear. The stacks meeting each other right at the sideline. What a shot from Steel Sky. Steel nerves at that. They're up by three. Still in the way the game there. Aurora now 5-2-2. Two, two. So um, we did see a breakaway at one point in the first round with Project Mayhem. And that momentum did carry themselves out throughout the rest of that round. So now, with Aurora making a breakthrough here with a three-point lead, I mean, maybe the momentum might shift towards their favor here. Moonface trying to definitely pressure that pass here. The law with the disc, finding a clue through the left side. B-Love now from the left tunnel, looking for a cross, a swap off the lane, maybe a reset from the Pac-Man. That will work out in the end. Now the law making his way through the mid side, does have pressure from Saluna. Great shield there, great reset. Now all members inside that blue side bubble. Saluna attempting to pressure these passes. Can it work for them, however, as the passes make their way towards the bubble, the law with a slam dunk. Nice patience. The defense was pretty decent there in the midfield as Saluna was pressuring and trying to play a little monkey in the middle, but basically not allow the free walk up the floor. That's the thing as well when you're defending against defense. Uh, but credit to Project Mayhem because they were able to just dissect that still yet to find their, their shot and a very high percentage one at that. And now Caesar with the reset back to Skydiver and they're playing very safe here. Five to four. They know that every point matters in this situation. Not looking to let any of them get through. And that, that rebound definitely getting very scary close to those goals there. As the recovery comes here from Aurora. Now Saluna with the disc. Does have two members on the left side. It is a 3v1 situation. The regrabs aren't going to be there from Project Mayhem immediately nice. as they converge around the goals. And Caesar with the slam dunk. And see, just anything you can do, they can do better, or at least the same. Uh, these are master teams after all, and that's what they're capable of. So, two things there. Uh, first, I believe it was Saluna walking up the floor with that first pass. But you notice, pass it just outside the bubble, kind of on the ceiling. Basically just outside so it was not diveable by the defender. That was number one. Number two was that cutting pass to make the defense all crossed up and offer the really close range goal, which makes it all the more hard to save, especially on those dunks. So nice awareness uh, again there from uh, Aurora. Just doing the little things to make the big difference. And now a three-point lead here for Team Aurora. So Project Mayhem need to find three to get themselves back in it and possibly seal off the game with, with this second round here. 
However, Aurora doing very well to maintain this lead. The pass to the backboard from the Law. Not going to quite meet its target there. They're trying to recover the discount. Will be Van now. Sending it right back inside that bubble. Going for the pass. The bounce not going to really work for them. As Steel does well to dive away from the goals and intercept that disc. And now the counter play. The re-grabs. The shot. Not going to quite make it. And right through the planes, sending it left lane, picked up nicely by Steel Sky. So the right idea on clearing it opposite tunnel, and yet the stack there is what caused that trouble. So we'll be back to them. Steel Sky Diver from the bottom of the floor, now spreading out for Aurora. Meanwhile, on the defense, you got Banzi in the goal, needing to defend this one. The inversion, no conversion, back outside to the boot. A uh, close attempt there from Moonface went for the backboard shot as the re-grabs come from both teams. Project Mayhem, the law able to create that opening there for a second as the re-grabs are on their way. Just not going to directly be on the disc. On the same time, still Skydiver able to stun, may possibly buy some time for them as Van makes the, his way uh, right across that Pac-Man there. Going for the cross on top of the roof. Two members there to support each other. The oh. law went all the way in for two. Really nice shot there. Uh, the lot could have been a pass as well, but that's similar to what we saw in one of the matches earlier, where he said it's a it's a double threat, right? Going to a, a space where nearby the goal where there's already a teammate to catch it, but also throwing it in a way where even if the teammate doesn't catch it, it's a scoring threat. So you're making the goalie juggle two different uh, uh, saves essentially, or two different uh, possible defensive plays at the same time, depending on if it's caught or not. It definitely is worth the while to have that player there if that is the strategy that they are implementing here. It definitely works out in a lot of situations as we see now Aurora with a one point lead. So Project Mayhem need to find the lead here if they want to be taking away this game. Now Palace with the disc, clearing it through that mid side. The regrabs aren't going to be there immediately from Project Mayhem. A bit of disruption in the back line. However, they are going to meet it to try and pressure it. And indeed they will. The law sending Whoa. it in, dinging off the side of the post. Oh, the top of the post and trying to recover it here. They might be able to. Project Mayhem getting cleared out from Aurora. But very quickly on the recovery, there they are. The take back for Palace. Palace eyeing down the pass. Left lane, there's two players there. One at the bow tie. Van Z looking for the cut. There's the delivery, the pass, and Ooh. leaving them in shambles. It's a one-point advantage. Project Mayhem. Oh, that was a great a great swirl there from Van Z. Went for the shot, did a little swipe to the left, and placed it in avoiding the grasp of the keeper there. So now taking a one point lead here, Project Mayhem, Aurora with the just advantage. And Aurora now need to be taking a lead if they want to be getting into round three here as Saluna with the disc getting stunned out. Will there be a recovery? Nope, Vanzi taking a hold of the disc now. They're looking to extend their lead here, potentially Vanzi getting some regrab uh, some regrab pressure. So they will be resetting it now. All right, one point advantage, one minute 37. A score here would be big, but could it make it happen? 132 left, and that's a clear. So needing those boosts or leeches either or. A little bit slow to the stacks, missing a grab, but the second one is there to save the day. They miss it, and they make it. <laughs> Saluna 22 puts Aurora up by two on the miscue on the stacks, and that is punishing one minute 15, and we'll see. Uh, oh. A lot, a lot of time, got to score soon, and ideally no threes. And it's such a devastating moment for Project Mayhem. The regrabs are there, the regrabs are fast, but they're not on point, and that will punish them in that situation as Saluna found that open goal, found those, th found those points. So now Project Mayhem need to find three to take away the lead here. Two will do it, however. The law getting stunned out, and, and Moonface clearing it away. So now 47 seconds left on the clock. Project Mayhem need to recover quickly. They need to recover fast with these regrabs. However, these regrabs coming from Aurora might just be taking away that potential play there coming from Project Mayhem. And uh, Moonface doing an excellent job there defending that to cause a turnover in the first place. Now they just got to be careful, especially with less than 30 seconds remaining. This is where you cannot get a three. Caesar, a wise dive and deep into the orange end. That's going to bounce very, very close. And they just got to be careful. Way in the back line, you might see in the on the mini map, just trying to recover into the goal, not allow threes, especially off of this uh, worst case scenario. OT, now that is a very, very bold dive and fortunately pays out. But man, oh man. Uh, would that have hurt if he had not gotten that back? One more though to the end, and maybe in the scoring zone, oh it's God. gonna be an overtime. What on the last second? That was crazy.
10 to 10 Project Mayhem come in and take those last two points, forcing it in. We are going to be heading into an overtime now. Project Mayhem have taken away the first round, and if they can find the next few points, they will be taking away the second from Aurora. Aurora need to be holding on here with this just. The headbutt might be working against them here. Oh, that's unbelievable. At the last possible second, maybe even just a tenth of a second left. That clear is underway. The stacks are as well. And now a big stun. A chance for the round three. And there it is from Moonface and to the moon shoot for the stars. It's uh, over. Aurora forces a third round. What a round it was. Talk about a back and forth game. Talk about a back and forth minute a second, whatever we just saw, that was crazy. From an overtime, Aurora taking back the lead here, and now it's one to one in terms of rounds. We're gonna be heading into the third one. The chat's going crazy, we're going crazy. We're gonna be heading into the third one now. Project Mayhem, uh, that, was, that was such a clutch play at the last second there, but Aurora doing very well to get themselves back into it. Absolutely, I, wow. A stellar, stellar round. That was both of them so competitive. Decided just by single, single goals, as you can uh, see there. Fixing that score real quick, but single goals, 14 to 11 in uh, that first round, and then uh, uh, 12 and uh, to 10 here in the second, and overtime no less. Off of what again? That was an unbelievable shot to force overtime. I thought there was just no time, and nonetheless, they stuck with it. They didn't give up until that final buzzer. That was insane. That was absolutely insane, Pam. Yeah, just definitely to goes say. to show every second matters. Every yeah. second does matter in this game. And it's if, if, if you haven't witnessed it before, well, here it is for you. It's painted itself here right in front of everyone in the chat, right in front of myself and Palador. Every second matters. So you got to utilize every moment that you have in the game. As we head to this third round now, both teams with one round to their name. So we'll be taking away the game. We will see. All right, well, headbutt play to start it off there. Steel will still retain, however, so that's going to be right back to the left lane. Uh, taken uh, at the bottom. The goal is a little open there. So you can see Moon was even kind of sitting there waiting for it. And the Law just getting there right in time. Dangerous, but a nice grab. Yeah, and also message in the, message in the chat from Manifold Max. Paolo, did you hit your 1,000 uh, stream as Bandy uh, hits uh, that uh, one pound three uh, point? I don't want... That was from 43 meters. Oh, okay, I'm, I quit. <laughs> to the max, was that uh, in uh, immense fashion? Even some comms for some reason snuck through. <laughs> I don't know. That's happened a few times in here. I got it muted, but a couple of the comms have, uh, for some reason, just... I think if you're loud enough... It overpowers the mute yeah. somehow. Uh, there it is again. Caesar though with the disc, and they are going. And that was a great shot. Maybe another one. Another snag, almost identical uh. to the opener there in this third round. And he's doing very well with his sequence of plays here. And you know, when there's a will, there's a way. If you can scream loud enough, you can overcome the muted comms. And Saluna now <laughs> with the disc. Saluna with the disc now, clearing it through that right tunnel. And they're attempting to follow up with this clear Project Mayhem, trying to nail it down in that midsection. It will work for them, however. Now the law off the left tunnel has members. That is number 88, Vanzi, on the, on the bottom right of the floor. They're going for a possessive play here. Eight minutes, 30 on the clock. And Matt Mika with the stats there saying it was point, uh, 0.22 seconds left before that goal and, uh, to force that overtime. So that definitely right down to the wire. Uh, needless to say, and we did have one match uh, earlier in the season that was actually a, a 0 0.01 if I recall correctly. That said though, I mean, that's just immense. Uh, Steel Sky, big shot as well to put them right back up or back, back to the tie, I should say. Uh, not trying to concede anything more than they have to. I mean, those threes, typically in a master match especially, you don't get a lot of open ones. So when you do have them, even if it's only for a second, you gotta capitalize. And that was a capital S from the steel one. Yeah, well, talk about seeing something different from teams every round in these master tier games. Uh, I, I feel like there's always a different play around every corner. And I mean, even taking a look at this game, uh, just Project Mayhem and Aurora both putting in a lot of Whoa. work here as that that disc nearly making it working its way inside the goals there as Caesar takes a hold of it, going for a play along the, along the rim of the backboard there, and Steel recovered it and sent it in for two. All right, and to address Twitch chat there as well, yeah, round one, a flare, uh, round one was 14 to 11 to Project Mayhem. Uh, uh, decided by just, yeah, that goal towards the end, and then round two, 
Uh, Aurora, 12 to 10 in overtime at that. And look, looking like it wasn't going to be an OT, but then that last second shot off a really long pass. Uh, but been super competitive here. What a great way uh, to just to end this uh, block of streams here tonight. Yeah, I mean, I couldn't, I couldn't wish for anything more than an overtime here. I mean, heading into round three now with these two brilliant teams and brilliant players, to say the least. Now Vanzi with the disc. Grabbing, grabbing it and uh, does have players making their way alongside the bubble. So Maiko for a pass towards the backside. That's going to be Palace getting some pressure there from Aurora. So brilliant slap away there. And now the regrabs, they're all attempting to disrupt each other here. No one wants to have a counterattack placed upon each other as they all converge onto that disc. It will be Aurora recovering it. Oh Moonface God. with the clear through the right tunnel. And some more loud gums coming through. I don't know, folks, but that said, you can hear the intensity in the voices. Uh, with that, another grab by Moonface here. And uh, with a two-point lead in this third round, I mean, obviously, every single every single play is so vital once you get to these third rounds. This is, again, after 20 minutes of battle in the first two, and it was a battle. It was not an easy win for either round for either team. So at this point, it's all about that execution that makes the difference in Master. Again, I'm, I'm all for playing slow in some of these situations as we can see Aurora now taking their time and finding those passes, trying to walk the play all the way up to the goals there. And it might work for them in this situation. Moonface under the shields Ooh. and made its way in. That was a brilliant play there from Moon. Yeah, walk in, play, and walk to the plank, and indeed stealing some scores like pirates. See, it all goes back. It all goes back, uh, Pam. But with that, yeah, uh, Aurora starting to catch some fire, catch some heat. Project Mayhem attempting to uh, rebound and offer some up of their own. They definitely need it here because, uh, as I said earlier, two goals in a row, one thing. You start giving up three, that's when it's dangerous uh, for any team. Yep, and a good reset there from Moon to Steel as they go for a, pot a potential play here. The follow-up on the on the clear. Steel Skydiver placing it on the right side of the goals there, just missing the goalkeeper there. So Aurora now with a, a nice lead there on Project. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, and with that... Uh, I mean, six-point differential, so they're still going to be in it. The Law here trying to go out on this joust with Palace attached, so a dribble attempt, and that will actually have some success now. Let's see if they can make a move. There's a train, and they're moving indeed, <laughs> and there is a pain delivered right into the goal. Five points on the board. They're within four. That train, as well as points, it delivers hype. It delivers momentum. And it's always great to see there. So Project Mayhem might be trying to cause a bit of mayhem here in the last half of the third round. I mean, that train definitely might inspire some more craziness as they try to converge onto that disc there. Aurora trying to keep that possession there as they find those passes through the midsection. And Aurora, they might allow this pounce off the backboard. It didn't work, but Moonface ensured that it went in. Yeah, got the disc right back from the dark side of the moon and send it right, uh, send it right where it needed to go. Eleven to five, less than four minutes remaining, and uh, yeah, for those two again, see some more numbers starting to creep up here towards the end of our long stream block tonight. But you definitely joined a great match in progress here in the final round. After both rounds one and two were decided by a single goal, including an overtime in there. So uh, it's been great. The law here needs to make a shot, and uh, there's the duck. And we'll inject it into the goal and deflect it off of steel. Yeah, I, I believe four points required here now for Project Mayhem. A great play there from the law. Still skydive, unfortunately, I believe did grab it. And uh, I pressed the button on my keyboard. It looked weird. I tried it out for one time. The disc teleported in the goals. And uh, you know what? I'll, I'll keep my hands off that button from now on. As Aurora now with the joust advantage, skill, the, the still skydiver, the skilled skydiver, uh, went for that clear through the left tunnel, getting intercepted by B-Love. And uh, the goal is exposed here if they can get a quick turnaround. But uh, let's see, taking it now, now the goal covered off. Project Mayhem really in a territory where they need to defend. Suffice to say, pointing out the obvious here, but we're talking crunch time in crunch round uh, here in round three. So two goal differentials separating and any time that can be wasted and any shots that can be made will really propel Aurora to a possible win uh, coming off of just some intense action. Yep, and now Caesar with the disc clearing it over to the nest. That's going to be Steel and Wow, Pam, Wow, Palador. This is a great game. I have to sneak that word in. Shout out to Sputnik Cobra in the chat. 
Well, it's not a sneak if you point it out, but Sputnik yeah, Cobra. Well, I don't want to. <laughs> I don't want. I don't want to um, be shouting out my own name like that. I don't know. I feel weird. Palador, Palador, Palador. No. I was trying to. Now, do you feel weird? I was trying to Beetlejuice myself, and I am here, so I guess it worked. Uh, but hey, uh, the law <laughs> with the disc here. Yep, the law now on the right tunnel. Uh, 1 minute 50 on the clock here, so clearing it back towards the left. They are aware that they need to find some points right now. Two, two threes will do it for them. However, that clear there from skills from Steel Skydiver. I'm always going to call him skilled because we've seen quite a few plays there from Skydiver this game. And now Palace intercepting it and feeding it back. All right, there's a great stack. Look at all the, the re-grabs in that chain. That was immediate and that was efficient. They needed it. They got it. Uh, 13 to 9. Still tough, but still time. Indeed, still time here. Aurora now with a joust advantage. And the question is, will they try to play it slow here and try to maintain their position? Or will they play aggressive and go for those shots? Because either will work in a lot of situations we've seen here. And it does seem as if they are going to be going for points here with that clear. However, will it be punished here? Now Van grabbing that disc, trying to send it out, getting intercepted by the block in the mid side. Oh. And the long shot from Saluna might just seal away the third round here. Still some time, but Aurora are taking a strong lead. Absolutely crazy. Uh Caller, caller Saluni, because just absolutely nuts. Can't even give a, a single, single little a crack of space. Otherwise, it's in there, and it was. And that was a mighty, mighty shot to really propel them uh, to perhaps that victory. 16 to 9. That was stellar. Moonface, and Moonface right down into the uh, midline off that bow tie. Uh, yeah, time is gone. Yeah, and Vanzi looking to find a one last play here, sending it over to the Law. The Law off the backboard to Palace. Palace looking to send it in, finding two points. And that might be the final score of this game here. Aurora doing very well to create such a large gap and just doing very well indeed to maintain that lead here. With the Joust advantage, Aurora will be your winners for this game. Talk about a back and forth match, Palador. Oh, yeah. A lot we could talk about. It was... It no, no, interesting. I don't know what happened with my mutes and not mutes, but uh, yeah, everyone got the good games at, at the end at, le at the very least. And like I said, a lot to talk about really because, you know, Project Mayhem had a stellar first round. We saw that yesterday versus Ethereal as well. Uh, we saw, again, the, the ability though for these master teams consistently, you know, they can reverse sweep and that is a tough thing, not just in terms of skill and such, but just uh, the mental game, right? Being able to hold strong after a yeah. tough loss, especially a close loss. I talk about it a lot where I don't know sometimes if it's actually worse to lose by like several points, you know, by three, four goals or whether it's worse to lose by only one point, uh, just in terms of the, the mental yeah. toll that it takes between rounds. But Either or, whatever way you cut it, it's uh, still impressive to see these teams be able to rebound off of losses and close losses and come back to just have a, a phenomenal uh, finish to the, these two rounds, uh, you know, for Aurora able to secure it. Yeah, an impressive game indeed. I mean, all players definitely playing their part here from both teams. Project Mayhem, I mean, even even that last play there for the overtime in the second round, I mean, it definitely shows how you have to be putting in, you have to be putting in the work every moment. You have to be striving to find those points because the moment you stop is the moment you lose. And Project Mayhem definitely proving how they are willing and they are able to work each and every one of those moments. However, Aurora also putting in so much work there. I mean, all it's you can't pick a single player uh, for the spotlight because mm. everyone has done so brilliantly in, in terms of each play we've seen. I mean, to pick a few, Skydiver, Skydiver's uh, brilliant saves, intercepts Saluna's great shots, Moonface and Caesar just putting in so much work as well. I mean, even crossing it over to Project Mayhem as well. I mean, we saw we saw so many great saves there from the Law and Van, as well as the follow-ups from uh, fr from them and uh, Palace and B Love as well. I mean, that's why I say you can't put a spotlight on a single player. I'll just go off and list every single one in this game. They've all played insane. A great match indeed, and uh, great to cast it as well. Seeing all the GGs flood the chat, a great game indeed. Oh yeah, absolutely a phenomenal. I mean, I, I'm I'm ex I'm so excited. How am I, how are you supposed to calm down after some matches like that and OTs? Uh, Frostpod saying decent match. I hope that's sarcasm because. 
Well, that was more than that was more than decent. That was that was good. That was magnificent. It was it was all the sense. Add them up, and that was a hundred bucks uh, worth of entertainment there. And we gave it to you for free. <laughs> uh, that said, yeah. you got guys got your channel points. Uh, there you go. And yeah, I mean that was that was that was fun. Uh, really appreciate all you guys joining uh, again. Uh, Crazy kit, the hydrations. Rest assured, even if I wasn't calling them out, I was uh, I was downing both both water and pepper. See, I'm trying to mix it up today. Uh, nice. A little bit of health with a little bit of not, I guess, but still, uh, you know, good times all around. Uh, thanks again as well, Burnsy earlier on. Uh, so for the gifted subs, appreciate that very much. And good, yeah, it was great. Uh, Manifold, this was the one thousandth and one uh, cast. Yes, correct. But uh, Ham, uh, what's up? Th thanks again for joining. Those were all really fun matches. Did I? I couldn't. I couldn't be more happier to join. I mean, great matches indeed. Uh, I might need to install like a, a new redemption in the chat. Redemption of uh, not hydrate shower. We need to get a, a shower hydrate re redemption there because you know yeah. what? Sometimes water just isn't enough. <laughs> After the plays we've seen here, yeah, water is definitely not enough. We need to. I need to be showering in like a nice cold one because honestly, I mean, wow, the amount of heat that these teams are bringing to these matches is, is insane. And uh, yeah. as well as the chat as well, I mean, uh, chat, not not in a bad way. The heat from the chat, I mean, you guys are into it as well, and it's great to see everyone into it. So I'm into it, um, as you can tell. Oh, you probably can't tell, but I am sweating, so. Well, me too, but I mean, some of that is the <laughs> the energy of these matches. Some of it is, some of it's the lights uh, shining up on, on my face here. But uh, yeah, I, it's definitely a pleasure casting these ones, as I said, just... Uh, gets all the adrenaline uh, pumping, ba uh, basically. So whether you're playing, that, that's why people come in here all the time. I know they stop by and they watch for a while and they say, "Okay, this is great, but I I want to go play some Echo actually because this watching this makes me want to go do something yeah. like I just saw." And I I still get that feeling too, as much as I love casting and and such. Uh, you know, uh, de definitely when you get those overtimes, when you get those crucial clutch moments with those big uh, big plays, then it just it's like a primal instinct somewhere in the somewhere in the the monkey brain basically that just says oh got to go play got to go play got to score a goal punch mm. face Urgh. you know yes <laughs> exactly so. play okay play fun have good fun and also uh yeah again want to just a quick shout out again palador with his 1k games total stream today make it 1k and 1 with this one under the belt now project mayhem and aurora and uh, yeah, a uh, huge shout out to Palador putting a lot of work into the VRML scene. And yeah, really appreciate all the work that he does. And always great to be casting alongside him. Uh, great to be here as well. And uh, yeah, that Thanks. might be uh, one of my yeah final closing remarks there. I appreciate that very much. But uh, you know, as always, community community built and driven here. So it's uh, it, my pleasure. I mean, wouldn't be doing it as much, you know, a thousand plus times if I didn't uh, love it that much. And like I said, we're we're growing, and uh, I'm hoping as the time as time continues on, you know, we're going to see a lot more of, uh, I guess, a, a return to 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 lands and and gatherings and things like that. That's why, as I said, kind of in spirit of community and things like that, uh, wearing, granted, I don't wear it often because obviously I don't want to, you know, ruin it. But you know, my uh, old Eclipse jersey. I don't know if you can see that. Has all the autographs there from season one finals from uh, just about all the players who attended. Uh, back in uh, ESL VRL from 2017, you know, got people signing it front and back, and uh, that's kind of what I want to get back to eventually. So, for now, mm. we're doing this online, we're casting it online, but the goal, the dream, yeah, is to see all all of these, uh, you know, friendly faces once more. So, some new, some old, uh, at, uh, in the future events, and, you know, keep on building it towards where we know it's going to eventually be. So, I'll bring yeah. my Vegemite. Ugh. Okay, well, I'll bring my Dr. Pepper because <laughs> you really need it. Okay. Wait, have you ever actually? Sorry, have you actually tasted it before, at least? Or? No, no, never, never. I've never tried it. Oof. Us here in Australia, yeah, mm. never. All right, well. <laughs> on that, what a disappointing way to end the stream, Pam. <laughs> I, I'm all bummed out, man. Anyway, nah, um, thank you guys for joining. As far as other matches on this block, that'll be it, at least for me. Uh, I'll check one more time. I know there's probably stuff going on later, uh, OC included, so definitely not denying the idea that there might be some more coming, but for now, for now, uh, this will be it, it seems. So, yeah, uh, I've been Palador. That's been PamWow.
Crazy Kit, Vegemite, yes, I'll eventually. I mean, I'll try anything just about, just about at least. I'll try anything once in terms of foods, drinks, all that stuff, and uh, yeah. But I think that's it. Uh, so yeah, thank you everyone for stopping by. Uh, and thanks again, Pam Wow, for stopping by as well. Uh, all you guys at home, be happy, healthy, safe, be good to each other. And yeah, uh, we'll see you again real soon. And love you too. Take it easy. Season 3 of VRML Echo Arena is brought to you by HyperX, Rebuff Reality, Asterion Products, ProTube VR, VR Cover, Fixed Gaming, and VRWare.net.